order. It is 7 p.m. on Wednesday, October 16th, 2019. Diane, please take the roll. Karen? Here. Carolyn? Here. Diane? Here. Patty? Here. Linda? Here. Kim? Here. 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 All right, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. 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 Pled
Fabs. Okay, so all right, well, well, let me let you me stop. Yeah, I, I've got them. All right, I've got Tisha, Matthew, and Myrna, and Stephen, and Dale. Is there anyone else who wants to speak? Nick. Simon. Young man. Niles resident, 46 years. The Milwaukee Tui TIF is ready to close. How much will you be getting back at its closure? 3.6 million will be divided by the taxing to the, the excuse me to the taxing bodies. I heard that the library could receive 160,000 to 195,000 dollars. Could we please decrease the budget and lower the levy? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Tisha. <laughs> that was so good. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect timing. Thank you. She's so good. Yes. Uh, Matthew is next. Matthew Gunia. Thank you. I thank the board for giving me time to voice my opinion. Although I don't attend meetings of the library board, I do watch them on YouTube, and I'm especially interested in the comments offered by the public. I'm appreciative of those who make their opinions known at these meetings. There's any number of things you could be doing, but instead, because you care about your community, you're involved. Niles is better because of such people. The members of this board likewise are volunteering their time and putting in a good deal of hard work to make our library system and our community stronger. If I were to base my opinions of our library and its Board of Trustees only on public comments that I see on YouTube, however, I would be forced to conclude that this board is incompetent and hopelessly out of touch. But, having spoken with each of you personally and knowing many library employees for several years, I found that you are neither. You are very grounded people who, in my opinion, make wise decisions. Now, the desire for fiscal responsibility is commendable, and I personally share that desire. I understand how a pattern of budgetary increases would be unsettling, and taken by itself, I likewise would be upset. I would also come here to offer helpful and constructive a critique as I could, instead of a general, that's too much money, and I'm upset. I'm not upset. Rather, I'm proud of this library and the work of the board. We live in many government jurisdictions, library, district, school, park, village, township, and importantly, mosquito abatement district. In my experience, the library adds more value to our community than other local government agencies with the expect, expect, exception rather, of first responders. As I have told you privately, the Niles Main Public Library District is a crown jewel of the area, and this library is one of the reasons I decided to relocate to Niles in 2012. My library, my family rather, makes extensive use of not only the materials, but also the programs offered by the library. I'm not alone. If anyone's on Facebook, maybe you saw a comment by Inam La, I've never met her, but she writes, we just moved to Niles and we moved because of this library. I used to come from Evanston to Niles Library. My kids really love it and they always attend the kids' activities and story time and like to play in the play area. Thank you guys for all the hard work you do to make the community happy. I rather like that choice of words, make the community happy. And I think you do that very thing. You do an excellent job of helping our citizens access information, grow in kindness and skill, and be exposed to new areas of interest. By doing so, you make the citizens stronger, and stronger citizens in turn make a stronger community. As I mentioned, I moved here in 2012. I moved from another village outside of Chicago, a similar size to Niles with similar demographics, an English-speaking, a Spanish-speaking, Arabic-speaking population. Now that community did very little to invest in our library. There were books to rent and little else, and we all suffered for it. 
The library was unused, it was in poor repair, it was outdated, and it felt dead. The staff salaries were low, and the quality of library workers reflected this low salary. This other library served my young family so poorly that we began using other area libraries because they had better librarians, a better collection, better programs, and an overall better atmosphere. That other library I moved from was not a source of pride, it was a source of embarrassment to our community. So please, accept my thanks for the diligent work you do on behalf of our community. You make Niles a happy place to live. The return our community receives by investing in this library far exceeds the dollars allocated. Well done, thank you, and keep up the good work. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you. Thank you. Our next uh, person up is Myrna Zelesny. Hello. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, me to speak here tonight. Um, I was going to have to be a little more prepared, but something came up at home. Um, the first thing I'd like to say is I'm not a library hater. I am probably, since birth, one of the biggest library people you'll ever meet. I was the one that was riding my bike to the library two, three times a week, getting 15, 20 books, crazy lady, putting them in my bike, taking them home. And as you were saying so eloquently, this is a lovely library. It's beautiful. We have a lot of great things. I have a grandson now. My grandson is coming here and picking up books and, you know, trying to rip them, of course, but we don't allow them. And um, so those are all great things. And I don't think anybody in here can say that it isn't a great place, a great library. But just as any great family or great store or great things, there still has to be some look at the fiscal responsibility regarding that entity. Okay? So I'm not saying it's a bad library. It's a wonderful library. But there's so many things that we can look at. Um, and I'm just going to throw out a few things that I'd like to mention. First of all, this is a beautiful magazine. It's, it's nice when it comes. But for people that have pages and pages here of electronic, we have to be electronic, we have to do all these things, why are we still sending out magazines six, now it's six times a year? When people are on email, why are we not trying to say, let's, if you sign up for email, you can get your library, or however you want to do it. It's just the, these little things are adding up that are going on, and those are the concerns that I have. So this, this is just an example of one. I was just quickly looking at this consolidated budget, and I saw, and I probably may be reading it wrong, but I'm seeing the library director is great, no problem. Then we have payroll department manager, payroll division supervisors, payroll division assistant supervisors. This is a, a library. It's basically a small building with a lot going on. And do we really need three levels of supervisors in a library? I don't know. You tell me. What, what is the purpose? And those are things that I think I would love to hear discussed. I would like to come to meetings and have you pulling out this budget and saying, OK, why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? What is this? What is that? And, and hear that. I, a lot of times, I don't feel like I'm hearing it. I, and maybe if I came more, I would. Would I, would I hear that? Do you talk about the budget? Do you get the budget? How, how far in advance do you get this budget to review the itemized one? Do they get it? What, 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 the budget is one thing, but it sounds like you're looking at the... I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm just holding this. So they get that once a month. Yeah. Okay, but, and it's all itemized. So, you, no, so, so everybody can get a copy of it? I mean, just... It's an online. Sure. Okay. Great. Right? Yeah. Those are things I want to know. So that's important. I also look at the... Um, I, I, I hear, I don't know, how many people... How many live people do we have working in the library? I've heard some crazy numbers, and I'd like to just know if it's true or not. I've heard somewhere between 60 and 100. Now, I'll give you the maintenance guys and right, the electricians. What my suggestion is to mm -hmm. list your questions out, send them off. Well, I'm not answer, asking for answers right uh -huh. now. I'm just commenting. Those are the things that I would like to hear in a library, okay, in, in some of these Perfectly meetings. So th those are, that's it. Um, and I think that's really what I wanted to say at this point. Um, you know, I again, mean, just for that uh, library thing, how much is the postage? How do we assess the quality of our programs? Um, when you're looking at this budget, did anybody, did we decrease anything? One thing, did we look at it and say, yes, we decreased it? I, I don't know. But those are things that I think all of us would just like to know and feel like you're really looking at it and saying, I'm just not passing something. I'm, you know, trying to um, really look at it and see if we're doing the best thing we can. 
to keep this library working at the high level that it is, but doing it cost effectively. That's it. Thank you. All righty, our next uh, name on the list is uh, Stephen Yassel. Good evening, board. Uh, Stephen Yassel, Niles. Um, I just wanted to start off um, by thanking Tim for participating in what I would say is question and answer on social media. He's very open with uh, hearing people's questions and giving lengthy answers, which I think a lot of thought was put into it in time. So, really thank you for That's doing true, that. Thank you. Very well. um, my my topic uh, for tonight is always going back to the same topic, but. Um, not nonfiction and reference books. Um, I, I look at this uh, consolidated budget, and I don't see specific line, line items for those two uh, types of books. But um, I would like to see uh, an increase in both nonfiction and reference. Um, I I noticed that our uh, local miles of Illinois reference lockup uh, cabinet is uh, near capacity. So it'd be kind of cool to see a, like a third one uh, be put next to it to possibly add on to it uh, over time. But uh, yeah, I think it's really important for us to have reference books and nonfiction uh, that could stay in the library that wouldn't be uh, susceptible to the loss of theft or, or damage. So, uh, but other than that, um, I know it's a team effort to help run the library, and we do need to voice um, our opinions and concerns, and I just hope that we will continue to do it in a cordial manner. So, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next person on our list is Dale uh, Zilligan. Yeah. Hi, name's Dale Zilligan. I've been in Niles since 89. My big thing is talking to all my neighbors down the street. Most of us are all older. No one's ever used the Yale Library, and their children have only used the library basically at school. I also work for a large school district. And, you know, we've got 30,000 people in Niles. How many people actually use the library on a weekly or daily basis? and how many don't, but still pay taxes. Those are the people you have to think of and be fair to. It's great to have all these programs and offer all this stuff out, and how many of the people don't actually live in Niles that use the library? And that's a question I'd like to know. And as far as the administration goes, I started at the school district 12 years ago. We've more than doubled our administration. <coughs> Why have things got so complicated? Why have we, our costs have more than doubled? And my question is that everybody has to draw the belt in. Everybody has to. We can't, you can plan on replacing everything, but is it necessary to hold this funds instead of taking out a low interest loan and then budget it for the next year? Why do you hold our tax money prisoner? My only comment. Thank you, Dale. Our next, uh, uh, Bob. Okay. Everyone's seen me before, you know what side of the aisle I'm on. You're one of the few people that I actually know that are moving here because of the library. I know plenty of people that are moving out. The state of Illinois is number one in the country for people moving out. You know what I want you guys to do? Everyone on the board, I want you to go down into your library and start pulling up some articles and reading for yourself what's going on in this state. Uh, one of the articles is how bad does it have to, does the Illinois exodus have to get? Uh, why are people leaving residents in uh, Illinois in droves? The Illinois population's worsens, fifth straight year. We're sitting over here 
these uh, taxes are ridiculous. Companies are moving out. We're sitting there, 9.1 billion in unpaid bills. We have 239 billion in uh, pension deficits. 37.4 in banks. Uh, it's just skeptical to the government here. It's you know what happens every year. It's like this uh, town of St. Charles, Woodridge, or Galesburg is completely gone. That's how many people are leaving the state of Illinois. You're wiping out whole towns every year. And they're not leaving because of the doggone weather anymore. They're leaving because of the taxes. I sit there, I get my tax bill, I look at it, I'm like, what am I getting for it? Really. It's, it's, it, you really, I can't even justify it. I'm going, I've had all my friends, cousins, relatives, you're breaking up families, you're breaking up uh, friendships, people are leaving, and you know, you sit there, you think, oh geez, I'm going to retire, I'm going to go golfing, I'm going to go boating, I'm going to do something with these people, and they're not here. And they're moving all over the country. It's not like they're moving into one place. Illinois, where it's the worst governed, it's the most overtaxed state in the country. And you got uh, state and uh, municipal corruption, and the only thing we do here is double down. I know we have a great library, and I like the library. I'm proud of the library. But I don't think we have to spend it. I want you guys to sit here and look at what you're spending and keep these costs under control. That's the number one thing. That's all I got. Thank you, everyone. And actually, now I have to go back to work. To pay his taxes. So what? Z A L E S N Y. And you're with me. Okay, can we have this conversation? Oh, okay. All right, can we next? Uh, we're going to have the trustee reports. We'll begin with the president's report and then go around the table. So, uh, uh, as uh, Stephen said, I did join the uh, Everything Niles group on Facebook, and I encourage all the trustees to do so. I've had a number of uh, energetic uh, conversations with a number of people that are actually in this room and other people on, on the active group. And I, uh, I've, I've enjoyed it. I think it's a, it's a great thing. It's a nice way for us to uh, interact with um, our community. So I do uh, encourage that. Uh, I attended the Californian incident, incident and Hamlet, put on both put on by the Shakespeare Project uh, this month. Uh, Hamlet was completely sold out. It, uh, it was a fantastic production. Uh, California incident was uh, well attended. But in both cases, I got up and addressed the uh, patrons who attended the performance, and I thank them for doing so and supporting the library uh, and supporting that project. So um, it's my attempt to interact with our, our patrons on a, on a regular basis. That's what I did this week. Um, yeah, I just like to follow up on that in terms of uh, talking on Facebook. I always have concerns about the open meetings act, making sure we don't violate the open meetings act. So just, just maybe we want to be careful about that. We can't really discuss business between all the trustees on Facebook. Sure, as is so, right. yeah, the answering questions, you know, for members of the public is fine. Sure. So in terms of the open meeting act too, um, I just have to be doing a little research about this, and uh, our administrators may be well aware of this already. Uh, but the Open Meetings Act was recently amended to allow us to discuss not only specific employees who they would have incidents with, but also specific volunteers uh, and for contractors too. So that's just something that uh, we can do in the future if we had occasion to. I don't know that we will. Um, I did get to a couple of events during the past month which I found very interesting. One was the lecture about Edgar Allan Poe on October 7th, which was, I think was the anniversary, go to the yeah, anniversary of his death, but yeah. uh, his birth. I can't remember. It was one or the other. But in, in any event, um, I really appreciated it because one can certainly, and I appreciate the fact that there was a program, because one can certainly read Poe's works, but having um, sort of a trained, I don't know if he's an actor, but Presenter. read his works really gives me life to Poe's work and to the, to the menace in it. Uh, so it was very good. 
Um, I also attended the program on uh, Dr. Abbey uh, teas and how to make food um, that might have been served during that era, which was also very interesting. Again, you can read a cookbook to find out how to make things, but there's nothing like actually watching it done and seeing exactly how it should be done. So I appreciated that uh, that program too. So that's that's great. Thank you. I um didn't get to go to all the Dalton Cafe ones. I wanted to. I only went to one. The fashion one it was very good. I, um, I did go to the garden uh, appetizers, I think it's called something like that, where uh, they gave a couple of recipes for things you could pick, that you use that are going in your own garden. It was very good. And the chef was very informative. It was very nice. And I think there were there were both for twenty people that I don't remember exactly. So that's pretty good show. Thanks. Okay, anything for the group? Uh, no. This right. month I did not put in. No? No. no. Carol? No, not this month. There right. you go. So, yeah, can you interact any with them? You know, I had uh, just, I received a phone call from uh, Village Trustee Dean Stroh, I think, and he had mentioned that someone approached him at the open house for the fire department, uh, that the Park Ridge Library has partnered up with the sponsor to do um, a little library, you know, one of those little uh, borrowing libraries, the little library building type things, and somebody mm -hmm. volunteered in the community to build it. And he just wanted to pass the information along that a resident had. Uh, seeing that information and wondered if we had any plans for it and um, you know if, I think it'd be something if there was partnership that you know somebody could support it build it that might be something of interest particularly if you wanted to extend out into the northern part of the district that's you know in the unincorporated areas where um, we can possibly have a presence there so um, something long term to maybe take a look into. But I also came right as the Battle of the Books was, was letting out, and M was like bombarded with <laughs> hundreds of kids. So I'm so excited to see that that program continues to just be um, a massive, yeah. attended one. 40th anniversary this year. 40th wow. anniversary. Wow. Yes. Congrats. Great. Thank you all. Uh, next item on the agenda is Treasurer's Report. Chief. October 16th is today, and uh, this September was the third month of our fiscal year, and 25% of our way through the budget. Outside boys. I'll try. <laughs> September is the third month of our fiscal year, and 25% of the way through the budget. The library overall expenditures are under budget by 19% of the total budget. Revenue on page 9, if anybody's looking. Revenues total, uh, revenues 46% of the budget. Uh, property tax, 46% of the budget. Fines are 27% of the budget. Replacement tax. 20% of the budget, investment income, 47% of the budget, passport income, 25% of the budget. Salaries slightly lower than the budget at 24%. Page 10, library materials at 26% of the budget, library operating expense at 22% of the overall category is just a little under the budget. Page 11, general administration. At 19%, the overall category is just a little under budget. Page 12, employees fringe benefits. A little under budget at 22%. Utilities, a little under the budget at 24%. Capital expenditure, under budget at 0%. Page 13, building ex equipment maintenance under budget by 19%. Thank you. Thank you very much.
I will now entertain a motion to approve the payment of bills for operating expenses of $184,000. $683.60 and payroll expenses of $278,626.65 for a total monthly expense of $463,310.25. Do I hear a motion? Motion. Okay. Okay. All right. Any discussion on this? Karen? No. No? Katie? No. Diane? No. Linda? No. no. Carolyn? No. Sue? No. Sue? All right, Diane, please take her away. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? No. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Sue? Yes. Great. Uh, next item on the agenda is the director's report, but before Susan does that, I do want to thank Diane. Uh, for giving us a two-sided um, um, board packet. Yes, thank so you. So it bothered me that we had single-sided and we used as much paper as we did. So thank you very much for that. Well, you know, yeah, absolutely. Well, the are saving half a kit. So, yeah. Well, I appreciate it, right, too, because it took some tweaking to get the extra pages in the right places to make it all be you know, Good job, Diane. Good job. I'm going to start out my report with a video that was actually shot back at the beginning of this summer. Never seemed like quite the right time to show you, but this seems like a good time with so many residents here right now. It was made by Surgeon Vasilic, such as brother who used to work. The staff here at the Niles Main District Library really go above and beyond the call of duty. We come across people of all walks of life. The staff here at the Niles Main District Library really go above and beyond the call of duty. We come across people of all walks of life who rely on us to be their guide, their teacher, and their friend. We may or may not fully understand what they're going through, but we can always find a way to help. The one day a few years ago, I was at the CERP desk, and I was sitting there, and a couple came up to me, and it was husband and wife. And I noticed that they couldn't really communicate well, and they were trying to communicate something, and I couldn't really figure it out until I noticed she kind of made this sign, which means they're deaf. It's like, do you know how to say hi? My name is Tiffany. So I kind of went, hi, my name is T-I-F-F-A-M-Y. I could just see the smile on their face, just the fact that I had gone out of my way just to kind of sign and try to communicate at least something to them to know, you know, I, they're trying. She we got them a library card. I was able to kind of communicate my writing. They came back to the circus to check out their items that they had found with their new library card. And she had written down just how thankful she was that I went ahead and just tried to sign to them because she said a lot of people are scared to even try, especially if they know it. We have another patron who, uh, she had a child and the child was one and a half, although she had disabilities and she herself could not get to us because she was on the very far end of the district. We have been bringing books to this little boy since he was one and a half and she taught him to read. We would bring sometimes 50 books every two weeks and she's very proud of him because he's always been ahead of the class. He's been succeeding in school and she's just extremely proud of him and she has no intentions of letting us you know, discontinue service until he can get to a library himself. I had one man who came and said to me, I want you to know that I lost my job and I came to all your classes on the Microsoft office and I had to get work so I just took a job at a big box store and I'm stocking shelves. And somebody I work with said, hey, don't you know how to use a computer? He said, yeah, because I'd taken all your classes. I knew how to do all those things. And he said, well, they need somebody over in that other department that can do that. So I talked to him. I want you to know that I have a job as a manager now because of the classes I took at the Niles Public Library. There was a pale, frail, fragile, extremely thin woman standing there. She told me that she was 
looking for a non-fiction film, if we had any, on Irish missionaries in Africa. And I asked her why, and she said it was because when she was young, she was a nurse in this missionary with this priest and those nuns, and that she was dying. And she wanted to have material to, I, I guess you could call it dream by, to remember when she was a young woman and vital and purposeful in her step and energy. But because she gave me a name and an order of nuns and priests, I was able to find uh, still shots, one that included her in this missionary in Africa, a book on this priest, and a couple of other articles with pictures in them. She came back the next week. I had the materials for her. And it became very, very emotional. One summer, um, there was one young man who decided to come out to the group. And um, he came to me first, partially as a test, and also to, I guess, just like feel more comfortable. He had come out previously to his family, and I guess it didn't go well. So he pulled me aside, and he couldn't even like say it out loud at first. Um, he wrote it on a piece of paper, and like the way he had produced what was happening is he said, like, it's not like I have to tell you something and I hope you won't think less of me. And then, like, this really made me sad, just like the, the thought that he thought that I would think less of him. Everybody was okay with it, you know, I've embraced him. It really had a positive effect on my group going forward. And like, even in the years since then, we you know teens are, are feeling welcome when they come in here. We put up signs, we put up displays, um, just so we you know that teens can feel welcome being themselves and, like, telling us their stories without worrying that we're going to think less of them. And so we really get a chance to help people a lot, and we do make a difference in their lives. It could be for entertainment. It could be for maintaining their status in the society by just getting a job, which is a big deal, as we all know, getting and maintaining a job. And um, it's really good to work with the people all the time. Thanks for that last shot. That's my grandson. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> He's so cute. Hi. <laughs> so I just, uh, I think it's always important to think about the reason that we're here. We talk a lot about our programs and things like that, but I think it's really important to uh, to see what a big difference the staff makes. And I just also wanted you to see the passion that the staff has for the work that they do, how seriously they take their work and how, how it's... Uh, it's really, it's important. It's not just, it's, we're not just an extra thing in the community. We really make a big difference in people's lives. So uh, thank you to Sasha's brother, Surgeon, who is no, sadly no longer working with us. He's going to be in great videos somewhere else. Um, let's see. Uh, we um, are going to be adding a new library to our computer consortium over the weekend, the Indian Trails Public Library, which is up in Wheeling and takes in Wheeling and Buffalo Grove is, is joining CCS. Their data is being added to the database over the weekend. That means they will take a picture of the database uh, on Friday. And so the, everything that you see, if you go look something up on the catalog over the weekend, you're basically seeing a snapshot of the database the way it looked on Friday. There won't be any new information. So like if you return a book, it won't show that immediately while they're uploading all the new information and we won't be able to check in things until after it's all done. It's, uh, it's a big project. We got added Morton Grove last year, Indian Trails this year, and then um, I think we'll, we may have another library joining next year. So about one a year. So we will be able to keep running over the weekend, but it will not be the normal level of, uh, you know, people are very used to seeing things be immediately checked in. If they look up and it looks like something's on the shelf, it might not actually be on the shelf, but it might have been checked out. And then all that information gets uploaded on Monday when we come back up. Does, so, does the consortium vote to allow a library yes. to join? Yes. Yep, that's right. Um, I think there's a maximum number of libraries that we're going to want to have. We don't want it to get right. as big as there. There's a consortium called Swan out west, and they have like 78 libraries. Um, but, the, but the cost of that is they have all gone with something where everybody has exactly the same. In CCS, each library has been able to make the 
the database work the way it will work best for their community. So we've been able to tailor things to our like to our community. Uh, so anyway, that's it. Just we, we are going to be informing the patrons in a wide variety of ways. There'll be a special newsletter going out. It'll be on the catalog. Um, it, there are a lot of different ways that they can find out about this. So, it's, but they'll still be able to. It mostly will be invisible to most people, but uh, but it's it, but it won't be quite normal. Um, let's see. I think I mentioned that we had a, a donation. Um, and they are working on it right now. They, it's for a memorial bench for a gentleman that used to go work a lot down in the uh, on the tech floor downstairs. He used the computers a great deal. They've been working on it the last couple of days. It turned out it, it's it's a fairly large project, but the, um, the his sisters are paying for the whole thing out of his estate, and so it's a, I think it's going to be a beautiful little seating area out behind the library here on Oak to the Court. Um, I do want to remind the trustees that the Public Library Association Conference is at the end of February in Tennessee, and if you want to go to it, you do need to tell me quite soon so I can get you registered. Um, let's see, uh, and then, so that's all I have on the director's report, but uh, we usually kind of lump together the patron comments, so let me just not forget those. Uh, there was one patron comment this month, well, there were two patron comments this month. One saying, "Why don't you ever have your pro Why don't you have your programs after 6:30 so that working people can come to them?" And the other one was saying, "Why do you have programs that run that are after the bus runs? Don't you know all the seniors are coming on the bus?" So it just goes to show you that it makes it. We cannot satisfy everybody, but I did want you to know that we actually are running the senior the Medicare program a second time in the afternoon. So I found that out after I wrote the comments. And uh, the last thing I wanted to mention is in the correspondence, we have a letter here from CCS that you may have seen that is talking about money that they're giving us back, uh, that is money that they got from Rails. Um, the, the Rails is uh, supporting uh, consortiums. They want the libraries to be in these computer consortiums, and so they're supporting them. So they are paying part of the cost of CCS for us this year, and we got our first chunk of that money. So that's why I'm the... First, or is there more coming? I believe we will be getting more. Wow. Yes. I have no idea yet how much. Uh, I do know how much, but I don't remember off the it's top of my head. Thousand, this one is, yeah, for this one, I don't know how much the toy total is. But yeah, it's nice to get anything. So, yes, it is. Yeah. So they get money from the state and from the federal government, and then they parcel it out in whatever way will most benefit the most libraries and most mm -hmm. people in the in the districts. So does anybody have any questions for me on uh, my director's I, I, report? Uh, I do appreciate the video. Um, what do you feel about uh, maybe having a conversational sign language session? Wouldn't that be kind of fun? As like a, a program? A program. Sure, that, I can uh, write that down. It, it, I never really realized anything mm -hmm. like that. Just mm -hmm. the ability to say hello, my name is. You know, yeah, it means so much to somebody. Yeah. Right, yeah. I hadn't thought about that. Maybe it would be fun. You know, how they, yeah, conversational with any language. Yeah. You know, just uh, what That's a good thought. <clears throat> uh, that's all I have. Thank you so much. Any uh, care? Um, I'm glad to hear that one more library is in the conservation. I learned a lot of books that might say maybe even half of them come from other libraries. Yep. Libraries in our own. And, you know, they come here very quickly. I pick them up and I, I get to use them. So I'm glad to have, uh, see one more library is joining us. I did have one question. It's not really a part of your report, Susan, but it's on the other page, mm -hmm. the trustee calendar. It oh, says, that's part of my report, too. Okay. Uh, Illinois, uh, excuse me, Illinois Library Association Conference trustee day schedule follows the calendar. But I wasn't really sure. So oh, that's, that. I'm sorry, I was just taking that off the calendar. That was from two months ago. Okay. Yeah, but that's a <coughs> have to take. Care of All right. So I do a plan on attending the one in Tinley Park. Uh, right. It's in like a week or so. Yeah. And I just, could I ask if anyone else is going for carpooling purposes? Okay. 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 All right. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Are you going? Yeah. Oh, okay. I was figuring I would drive. Okay. Okay. I'll All be right. there already. I think the journey back to lunch. The trustee one. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thanks. That's all I have. Ready? Um. Uh, no, I I read the um and. Was, uh, there were a few things. The bench was one that I definitely noted. I can't wait to see what it looks like when it's done. Thank you. 
Um, I did have one resident come to me and say, why did you have programs on the Jewish holidays? No? Okay. Because they couldn't attend it. And um, they would like to attend those kind of Okay. So maybe if, when you do that, if you can offer it again, kind of another day for them. Okay. And other than that, your director's report is so complete, it must take you many, many moons. <laughs> uh, not gonna lie. I love all the responses and the input from all the different departments. It's great. Thank you very much for sharing. I did uh, but thank you. And I just want to let you know that we'll be here for the uh, veterans with my dad. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Oh, World War II vet. That's wonderful. And uh, if you haven't yet, on your way out, you might want to take a look at the Veterans History Corner, which is right around the corner here. It's just, it's they uh, they made it look all beautiful since we had a vet on our cover here. Very nice. I like that. Yeah. Carol? Sure. Um, no, I'm good. Um, again, my only suggestion is I would uh, really like to see this director's report, which is really all the activities in the library on the website, so that um, all the residents could see it. I think it would be easy to upload all these pictures, actually these actual pages as well, and um, instead of it just coming to us and then ending up in the trash in many cases, it would be on the website and you could just update it every month and have it as an um, example of what we're doing in our library. Well, I know you have suggested it before, and I did think about it. Um, the, I think the issue is that I'm writing it to you, and I would write it very differently if I was writing it to the community. It would be a very differently edited kind of project. Mm -hmm. But what it I, is available on the website. People can get to it if they really would, are interested in it. But what I meant was all of our departments are showcased on paper, and it's passed around to the trustees. Right. Maybe our website should include our departments or areas showcasing what they do throughout the month on their own. You know what I mean? It would even not be you doing it. It would be each area or department. I'm sure they must be sending all this to you. And that, again, would get our library out on the website. Sure. That was my suggestion. Okay, thank you. I mean, I don't know if it's something you can do, but it would be something I just thought of. I just am so impressed by all of the outreach that the people in the library continue to do from the block party to being over at the mall and you know being where the people are and um, you didn't mention Judy getting that award and I think that is, is great. She's such a great uh, person to be involved in our community and it was terrific to see one of the staff members getting appreciated like that. Hey, great. Thank you so much. Okay, under unfinished business, we tabled our discussion of the determination of the 2019 lobby. <coughs> Excuse me. Do I hear a motion to pick up this item so we can resume our discussion? Go ahead and take it off the table. Um, so yes. Uh, we'll bring our discussion on that. Karen, uh, do I have a second? Second. Thank you. All right, Diane, please take the roll. Oh, you got the roll. Well, it's here. I'm so, so sorry, that was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Greg made a presentation last month, which was part of our your board packet this month. Uh, we will now resume our discussion of whether the levy should be increased, decreased, or say the same as last year. I will then summarize what I hear the board saying so Susan and Greg can prepare a levy ordinance for the approval at the November meeting. So to um, reiterate, we are not voting on the levy. Tonight we are voting, we are coming to a consensus as a board so that we can uh, create the levy for next month's vote on the actual levy. Uh, I guess I can start on this. Sure. Um, I just wanted to verify, I brought the packet from last month. Is, what it, is the packet this month, is it identical? Okay, fine, I just wanted to check on that. I know, I hate switching. <laughs> All right, so uh, somebody's got to start, so I'll start. Um, when we come to discussion of the levy, uh, we have to, uh, you know, we look at the budget, but we also have to remember on this particular budget, we do have uh, 1.9, almost $2 million uh, budgeted for our capital expenditures, which come out of our uh, special reserve funds. 
is that it's not uh, out of our operating funds. So, um, yes, the budget has been increased, but it, it's, it's not coming from levy money, it's coming from um, our special reserves, which is dedicated solely for those uh, projects. So our, our budget really is uh, about six and a half million dollars. Uh, our current levy is about 6.8 million. Uh, if we take out our um, budget, we have about $400,000 left. So, you know, as I said, we have a decision to make. We have three basic choices. Do we keep it the same? Do we increase it? Do we decrease it? Uh, by law, we can only increase it 1.9%. <clears throat> and for a little bit of history, we did not increase it at all last year. It was flat. Um, and this year, uh, we have to make the decision again. So I, I will toss it out. My uh, opinion on this is that we should uh, increase it for the 1.9, a little under, I, I would uh, recommend $130,000, uh, which is a little under the 1.9, which would mean for the last two years, we've only increased it 1% each year. Uh, the library is not um, immune to the cost of living expenses cost of living is 2.7%, so we're not even keeping up with that. Um, and, you know, clearly the library has equal expenses as everybody else does, you know, regarding cost of living. Uh, I also am a firm believer in fully funding our funds for future uh, uh, projects. Uh, the library building has been here for some 50 years or so, right? Uh, we had the last expansion, and you know, I assume the library building is going to be here for another 50 years. At some point, windows are start breaking, and uh, everything, you know, everything will, will need to be replaced and, and refurbished. Uh, our opportunity is to put money away now so that we have it for back then. I do, uh, I was, you know, I heard somebody mention taking out a loan for that at a low interest, but, you know, my opinion is that uh, no interest is better than, than low interest. So I'd rather save for it now so that we have it for that. So that's, you know, we have the three basic choices to make. We have to come to an agreement. But my, uh, my personal recommendation is uh, increase it to uh, 130,000. Um, you know, let's go the opposite direction, because we always go. And Sue, you were not here last time, so uh, hopefully you had an opportunity to uh, delve into this and give some thoughts. I do, and I agree with you, Tim. I think that, you know, we need to, um, keep even and I think if, if you're looking at it as you said that it's going to be one percent increase over the past two years and you're kind of balancing it out that way I have ultimate trust in the administration at the library that they're as fiscally responsible as can be with also making sure that we maintain the quality standards and a building that is going to continue to serve the community into the 21st century so, I agree. Thank you. Um, I have a question for starters, for clarification. You mentioned that we're going to remove the 1.9 or the 1971000 dollars, which are from special reserves out of the budget. I, I didn't say we remove it out of the budget. What so I was saying. In order to come up with a budget amount for this year, it's going to go from 8.4 to what? Well, okay. I was saying in consideration of levy, because as right. you know, the levy you know goes against our. Is, is to is fund our operating, well, no, mm -hmm. the funds are operating expenses. Right. Right. So if you take the 1.9 million that is designated for our capital expenditures, you've got left our operating budget. So, and th the amount then is what, 6.8? Uh, operating expenses would be 6.4. So if we remove special reserves, then our budget amount will be. 6.4 because you're going to I mean you could do it yourself you just so you're our, going our to budget. use our cash on hand to pay for what we call the capital projects plan well no as you know you know um, it comes out of our special reserve it's not cash okay on my hand. question is there's one million nine hundred seventy one thousand dollars in special reserves shown on the budget so these are new capital projects, which are part of the 3.6 million we discussed last month. I mean, did we decide to put some of them into the budget under special reserves? What does this number represent? 
Maybe Greg could explain. No, if you look at our budget. Clear. No, I'll, I'll answer. If you look at our budget, right, we have it right in front of us now. We've got a 1.9 million in capital expenditures. Right, and I'm asking: Is this part of the capital projects plan? Yes. It is. Yes. And what specific items does this represent? Because we didn't put all oh, that them would in be it. our prior discussion. It was brought up during our budget discussion. Well, I'm asking now: What does this include? Well, that was, if you remember, our discussion on capital projects when we uh, had our budget discussion. We went over all the items that were included in that 1.9 million. I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused as to how you not know what's in it. Well, because I just went through a $3.6 <coughs> million dollar capital plan last month, and we hadn't gone through all the items. But since we're going to take 1.9 out of that, I'm trying to just figure out well, okay, which so, items right, are sorry. we earmarked. I'm going to stop you. Stop saying we. This the was, board. This, no, no, no. Stop saying we. That I'm just, I just explained my thinking on this. Okay, so it's maybe my question is not clear enough. Is the one, is the 1.9 part of the roof? Is it anything else? Is it's capital expenditures. Which that were, what? that were described to us when we created our budget. But we have a discussion. I'm, I'm confused as how you not know what's in there. I'm confused. I'm asking for specifics. Well, I Can don't have Can you point to a document I have that will show me what this 1.9 stands for? I, I, this is right here, Carolyn. See, here's the, one, here's the total right here, 1.9. That lists all the different items. No, this total is 3.585. What page is it? So we didn't review all of these items under 2019-20. Remember we decided... Okay, we, what, what specifically is your question? Okay. We have $1.9 million budget shown in our budget in our for special reserves. Okay, Absolutely. we just had a lengthy conversation last month that we never even took the time to review those items because based on the engineering reports that we okay. received, there right. wasn't even justification right. for a okay. lot of it. So Fine. my point was, before we even talk about the levy and put these items in there, we should discuss as well, a Carolyn, board Carolyn, what the uh, validity is. I understand, but I'll stop you. As you know, being a former treasurer, capital expenditures come out of our special reserves which are designated specifically for capital expenditures. Capital reserves cannot be used for operating expenses. So once you put money in there, it, it is taken out of uh, general fund. So regardless of what it we budgeted I'm well aware budgeted, of what special reserves <coughs> So I don't understand what you're talking about. Okay, so my question is, what items did you plan to earmark to be paid out of this? Because we haven't Well, now, I didn't earmark anything. Well, there's 1.9 here. Carolyn, Carolyn. You know, I don't want to argue. No, I'm not arguing. I'm answering questions. So can questions. I just move on? No, 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 no. You cannot just move on. You asked me a specific <laughs> question. And I'm you not asked, getting a specific answer. Well, you asked me what ear, item I earmarked, and I did not earmark okay, any excuse item. me. What did we, as a library, earmark for $1.9 It was in our budget discussion, and it was provided to us. We did not have a budget discussion on any capital projects. Our budget meeting lasted one hour and 45 minutes, and okay. we rushed through it. Well, I have to disagree with you, because so, I well, remember... And if I you recall, at our last meeting in September, I All brought right. up the capital project. Okay, so what does that have to do with the levy? That we have not taken the time to review these items, but yet you've got 1.9 in the budget. Yeah, well, just because, well, let me talk, yeah. just because you have oh. money in special reserves, <coughs> that yeah. doesn't mean it didn't come out of a budget. Because we've relocated it or reallocated it to special reserves, so now it's stuck there. Yeah, and it can absolutely. only be used for capital projects. Right. So I wanted to know what we decided we're spending it on. Because as of last month, we had determined we hadn't even taken the time as a board to review okay. those reports. I, I can't give you an answer. That's quite all right, but that's what I'm questioning. Because I don't understand the question. And then again, that's fine. And then, since our budget is actually the purpose of the levy, I just want to remind everyone that since 2015, this library has had the most unique budget process on the planet. We have never been given any analysis of any of our programs or services. 
We are not we are not okay. given any documentation. Right. We receive an Excel spreadsheet. All right. Which so now that our would administration be, no, 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 that would be a discussion, Carolyn. I'm that would speaking, be a discussion for the budget process. And the what budget, is your recommendation for the levy? I'm talking about our budget amount right here I understand. that you plan what on is, using to determine a levy. What if is we your haven't taken the time to determine what our actual costs are and what on earth we're doing in the library except automatically increasing budget line okay. items, how right. do we even ask these taxpayers to pay more? What's your recommendation? That we decrease the levy at least a million dollars. Okay, thank you. Uh, Linda? Okay. Um, Alright, um, I'm just going to, first of all, I just want to say I am I am in agreement with you, Tim, and I, I was coming in actually um, thinking just to do flat again for this year. However, um, I am worried about um, having enough money in our accounts for after we keep up and have a surplus for time, you know, for future um, plans. Um, I again, too, I don't believe in taking out loans with interest. If we can all put in a few dollars, which is what we had decided was, I believe it was under ten dollars even per household. Is that correct? Right? What it, it was like under about under ten dollars per. One hundred thirty thousand. Yeah. Like, what was that base? Do we remember like what we? Had? Uh, there was uh, approximately uh, twenty-two thousand five hundred. Twenty-two thousand five hundred households. Um, so on average, it would be one hundred and thirty divided by twenty-two thousand, which would probably be about six bucks yeah. or thereabouts. Okay. So on average, I mean, you know, right? On the average, I understand. Much I know some are higher, some yeah. are lower. I understand. Um, however, in order for us to keep the twenty-first century, again, Greg, I want to give you a kudos because you have given us um, more interest on our dollars than in the past. And I want to say, yes, we would be asking for more money if it wasn't for Greg, if it wasn't for all the due diligence of our staff getting grants to pay for a lot of our um, services. Um, we do want our tax dollars to work for us. And we don't want to um, be in other states like other libraries. A lot of other libraries do not have any money and they're running in the red. We have been very good since I've been on the board for 12 years that we've been in that way. 10 years, actually, I've been on the board now. Um, we have kept our budget flat. I don't want to look at the budget as Carolyn was looking from 2015. I want to look at it back from 2012. Because 2012, the levy was at $7 million, and we are still nowhere near that. And I think that's where we need to look at it. We went down, but yes, then we had to bring it back up so that we weren't in the red. We were never in the red. We were going into we were the red. We were not we were, going into the yes, red. Yes, we were. Well, okay, that's a different You know what? I'll tell you what. But how about point of that's my turn to talk. I'd like Thank point of, of information. It's my turn. I'm asking point of information mm -hmm. regarding her comment. Right here. Huh? No, let her. Where does it show her. that we were going She's in the red? Sorry. Oh, when we had documentation off. I know, I'm asking that that be provided before we make okay. a blanket statement as such. Okay, all right. Well, this is Linda's opinion. Yes, it was my opinion, and not, it's not an even opinion. It was PowerPoints presented to us. If we kept with the money that we had, we would have eventually gone in the red. So, with that being said, um, and with the monies that we are going to have to um, maintain for sustainability for our future and plus the cost of living um i i'm with ten thank you thank you Ms. Okay, i'm going to jump around a little bit here thank you first i want to just say a few things about what 
my former Eisenhower trustee, has mentioned everything was outlined in this report. This was given to us by the administration. Exactly where the one million nine hundred expenses, what they are used, what it would be used for. You mean according to the engineer's report? According to learned people, people who um, the engineer's report. We have um, actually they provided a couple of reports, which that is a compilation of. Okay, so and they, they, get, they don't they, make up the information. No, they, they indicate they, it's not Excuse necessary. me, I'm not having that conversation oh, with you. Sorry. I'm just talking. My, it's my turn to talk. So this is not a conversation. So there, they use much, uh, many sources to compile these kind of figures. It is not just off the top of their head. They are a competent accountants and their projections are for the next five years, and in the next five years, we will not have enough money for all our capital expenditures. So just like owning a house, I'd like to have my bank account padded for a future roof leaks or new furnaces or whatever. I think the same thing is needed here in this library. This is a huge library, much many things that have to be repaired, maintained. I'd rather have the padding. I don't want to go to the public and ask for a referendum to get money to fix a, a roof or a parking lot. So I would um, agree with you to increase the smallest amount. That would add up to about six dollars per household. Very good, big thing. Okay. I too was originally thinking of keeping it up. It would have been the third year in a row we kept it up. However, um, I also agree we should be, you've got to be careful that we don't want to have to take loans. Get concerned about <coughs> I think we'd be doing the library and the village a disservice if we got to a point where we don't take loans in order to repair the necessary things to repair and the building itself. So I would say I would consider the lowest amount that we could raise the library. Oh, uh, well, that would be the, the, the lowest amount we could raise the library is like a dollar. Well, a little more than that, but you know, the lower, I don't want to raise it. Technically, we're only allowed to raise it once. 1.9%. 1 1.9%. So I wouldn't, yeah, which is still, like you say, below the cost of it. So are you leaning towards the $150,000? i am leaning towards it, but I, I yeah, I'm kind of leaning towards it. Okay. All right, Karen? Uh, I'm just looking at the, uh, which is page 52 of our handout here regarding the history of Project Pet Levy. Um, we, we have established sort of a pattern. We raised the levy in 2015, kept it level in 2016. Raised the level in 2017, kept it level in 2018. And following that pattern, I think it's appropriate to raise it in 2019, although I'd probably want to keep it level in 2020. Mm -hmm. um, if we did raise it, um, I think the new levy amount, if we multiply the old one by 1 1.9, would be 6.9 million. It still would be a low levy that's less than what we levied in 2012, less than 2011, less than 2010, less than 29, less than 2008. So we're, we're still lower. Uh, than at least five years in, in fairly recent history. So um, for that amount, for that reason, I, I do think it's appropriate to levy it. And, and I, and Mr. Zilligan, I was listening to you, and I, 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 I moved here in 1892, uh, it's our 30-year anniversary here in, in Niles, and uh, I've used the library a lot during that time, and I hope maybe, maybe you and your family will do some more in the future too. But in any event, um, I do think that if we're going to need money in the future to make remodeling or repairs or 
uh, or something, I would rather save up the money ahead of time than pay interest on it. I mean, that's what I do in my own home. I try and save the money so I don't have to borrow money because I, I, I'd rather do it that way. And I do appreciate the fact that uh, um, Greg has invested our money wisely and that every year we do get a fair amount of income from, from our, our savings. Um, so, um, and I know a lot of people in Niles are seniors and uh, don't have a lot of money, but even people on Social Security get a cost of living increase every year. And I think our, our library is entitled to a cost of living increase, even though we're getting it every other year, as it turns out. We're not even doing it every year. Uh, so, um, I think that uh, I think that's reasonable every other year to uh, get a cost of living increase. We're actually losing money uh, in, in a sense because we're not doing it every year, mm -hmm. but um, but I, that's what I think is appropriate. All right, great. So what I've heard was uh, essentially um, Sue, Linda, Diane, Patty, uh, myself, and Karen uh, in agreement on raising it. Uh, do we want to do the full 1.9%? I had originally said 130,000 just to, just to round it out. I'm going to go with 130. 1.9 is 130,000. 130, 130, All right, we'll, we'll go with the 1.9%. Um, so what I've heard is that uh, it seems like the majority of us are of the consensus to raise it to 1.9%. Uh, Greg, if you would do the math for us on that, and then create the uh, ordinance for us. Um, Carolyn wanted to de decrease it by one million, but it uh, doesn't seem like the board has a consensus on that. So, there is no role on this, it's just... Can I ask a question? Do we know what the 1.9% comes to? <clears throat> it's approximately $134,000. Okay, with $11 million in cash and investments, do we really need to do that? Well, we've just had our discussion. The board came to a consensus. I mean, I'm just it. trying to figure out, I maybe understand. you want to rethink it? Mm, does anybody want to rethink it? it doesn't look like I mean, all these people are You have an $11 million fund balance? Yes. Can't you send 130000 of that over to the capital expenditure fund? All right. This, are you worried this. about the $11 million running out? I'm sorry. It's not the opportunity. Oh, I'm sorry. I was uh, shocked. It's, I can understand My that. My office was right. uncalled for. Right. But you really have an $11 million fund balance? Well, yes. uh, it's four. Did you want to take $10 more from each uh, household? Does that make sense? Do you need your chair? That makes the most sense. I'll leave my hat at the front door if anyone wants to put $10 in it on the way out. I'll come and pick it up. All right. That seems Thank to be you. the reality of the situation. All right. Okay. I can ask you to be removed if you want to. Uh, you, right. you have to answer the question. You have to answer the question. Answer the question. Answer. Answer. No one's answering the question. Just answer. You're going to spend our money. What? For new chairs? What? You need to be in. Who decides what you want to do? Nobody wants to be in. Over programming. Yeah. Who decides what you want to do? Everybody's house in this in this office <coughs> room got an assessor's red letter saying that my assessment's going up 25 percent. Right. And 25 percent. You don't have to raise it up. It'll still, you're going to get more than a 1.9 without raising it. Over $600. Were you going okay. to sit there and like, want $10 more dollars? To what there was a sign of public comments. Okay. And, uh, I don't think we need to volunteer for up. the library. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we happy. need silence. Thank you. I appreciate your comments. We have had our discussion. All right. And I, we do appreciate everyone. I'm going to leave now before I have an outburst. All right. That would be great. And it would not be good. All right. But you should have more business Thank people you. here. More intelligent business people. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay. Thank you very much for your discussion on that. Uh, I now move on to do business. Draw your motion to approve a payment to Visiographic in the amount of five thousand six hundred sixty-nine dollars ninety cents for the October November newsletter. Second. Great. Thank you, Diane. Would you please take the roll? Yes. Carolyn? No. Diane? Yes. Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Sue? Yes. Thank you. Uh, we have three policies that our auditing firm suggested that we add. Uh, we'll ask Greg to explain each of these. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve the administrative policy 3.35 outstanding checks? Uh, anybody make a motion to approve? I'll motion it if nobody has a motion. Second. Great, thank you. Okay. All right. Um, uh, Greg, do you want to explain the, uh, the policy for the outstanding checks? Uh, certainly. So, um, uh, in the state of Illinois, uh, when checks become uh, stale, uh, we turn them over to the unclaimed property division, and what we do is we write a check to fund it uh, to the state, and we turn over all of the information. So, if the uh, people that we wrote those checks to decide that they would like their money, what they actually have to do at that point is go to the uh, State of Illinois Unclaimed Property Division. You've seen the listings in the newspaper from time to time. You look for your name and you find out that you got eight bucks because of something. You know. um, so, uh, most recently, I think it was uh, two months ago, uh, we had a bunch of uh, checks on our uh, a bunch of outstanding checks on our bank reconciliation um, that were written prior to January of 2018. And uh, the total amount of those checks was approximately $5,400. Uh, what this policy does is to formalize that process, put in timelines, and prescribe dates of action, and things of that nature. So, we're not letting them accumulate over time as we have in the past, and we're operating it in a uh, uh, more deliberate fashion. Uh, so that's you know that's what that's what the policy addresses. Yes, go ahead. So, Craig, I just wanted to just, so we have to write, not only write people check, but then we have to write another letter reminding them that we wrote them a check and telling them to please cash the check, and then if they don't cash the check. We still have to write a check to the state of Illinois for that amount of money. Right. Uh, but right. they can no longer come to us because we've, okay. you know, um, we've demonstrated our, you know, our uh, interest in in trying to get them to cash a check and get the money to them, and they've decided on their course of action. So. All right. And then the money. Actually, in many cases, um, mm -hmm. if they haven't cashed a check in six months, we may have to write them another check anyway. Because they, if they call misplaced, contact if they, yeah, if, because if they, they misplaced it, you know. Okay. All right, but I guess I'm a little trouble. I didn't realize this, but I guess it's the case that uh, unclaimed property it shoots to the state, not to us, even though it was our right. property. That, I mean, our check, and right. someone did not cash it. All right. Okay. I think I understand that. I'm not necessarily sure why it's the case, but I understand it. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is something we have to do according to the state anyway, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. It formalizes it. Okay. Linda. Carolyn. I had a question. Um, last month, um, Greg, you mentioned we have outstanding checks going back to 2013. Not anymore. We've uh, transmitted those funds uh, and those obligations to the state of Illinois. This month? Uh, I believe it. It might have been last month or it might have been the month before. So, I, I the, um, what what did we transfer to the state? What obligation, what years did we transfer to the state now? 
Uh, Probably. Every, everything from uh, as early as 2013 up through the end of 2017. Okay. Um, and then we have another question. These checks are to patrons? Some of them. And some are to whom? Customers or vendors? Yeah. And is there anything else we can do to, I mean, do we, we no longer, I guess if they're vendors, then apparently you're no longer dealing with them, so there isn't any communication? I mean, I'm trying to figure out why it's taken so long for yeah. us to identify them being outstanding. I think you kind of know every month. Yeah, I, you know, I can't comment on it because I, I just don't know what, you know, Commonwealth Edison does with our checks and who's, you know, whose desk it fell under and, you know, I, I, I just don't know. So when it's, oh, so for example, with Commonwealth Edison, if they lose a check the next month, they bill you that amount, so you know the checks. Well, it depends on when they lose the check. So we send them a check, they open it, I assume they make some sort of list of it. Uh, that list is used to relieve our account. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that there's a stack of checks that they have to uh, get into the bank. It probably actually goes into a lockbox. And if they, for example, tell us that, they, that they've received our check and they've credited our account, but they don't cash the check, you know, it's kind of a mismatch in their saying. system. Okay, that makes sense. And as far as patrons, is there any way that maybe we can connect with their, when they, when they check out books to let them know if we have a check? I mean, are they some of the people you write? I just feel like we've waited years and now we're going to wait six months and send money to the state. I mean, isn't there something we could do sooner just to turn it around and not make it such a monumental task? Well, that's what this is intending to do. Uh, to do it in smaller bites when a check gets to six months old, send a letter that says, cash our check. You know, kind of like your great aunt that sent you a $5 Okay, check. so this was created because our auditors noticed we had outstanding checks dating back to 2013, and this is the solution. I think I think I got it now. Okay, I just thought maybe when patrons don't cash their checks and they keep coming into the library, maybe we can reach out to them sooner based on some technology we use. But I get it. I, I, so this is definitely a better solution than going back six years. All right, well, that helps. Thank you. Soup. Sounds clear to me. Great. And you want to take a roll, please? Yes, Karen. Um, yes. Carolyn? Yes. Diane? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Sir. Yes. Great. Um, do I hear moving into new business? Do I hear a motion to approve administrative policy 3.36 capital assets? Motion. Okay. Second. And great. Greg, you want to take us through this particular? Uh, certainly. Um, <coughs> at the beginning of uh, tonight's meeting, uh, at, your, at your place was an uh, edited version of this. Um, what I did was, I, I, I can't put my hand on this one, but, um, Yeah, so uh, at your desk, uh, or at your uh, spot was, uh, was this document that has some bolded uh, text on it? Yeah, this Capital asset policy is going to be Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, that's it, yeah. What is the page number? There are no page numbers. There are no page numbers. There are no page numbers. Yeah. There are no page numbers. 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 Excuse me, Greg, I hate to be a pest, but is this the one on the table different than the one in the Yeah, yeah. So if you look at the bold text. See the difference? No, that's... If you look at the bold text, though, that's where I made a change. Oh, oh, this is what I called about. All right, right. I emailed about. I got so it. So okay. when I had written the, um, 
when I had written this policy for inclusion in the board packet, um, there was a reference to, um, I can't remember what I called it, uh, not the table, the schedule. schedule. The schedule. Okay. And uh, Carolyn uh, sent us a question about that, and I looked at it. It seemed like maybe uh, that was not explicit enough a word, so what I, what I did was I said, see the table on page two, sure. um, which is a little bit more uh, evident. On page two, I changed the name of the table to reflect the fact that it also has a capitalization threshold. Okay. So um, we've had a policy in operation at the library for uh, as long as I've been here. And, and essentially what it says is assets that have a, um, uh, a initial price including implementation of over $2,500 should be capitalized as a capital asset and then written off over time. And depending on what class it falls into, if it's a vehicle, five years, if it's equipment, including IT equipment, uh, five years. Our collections, um, we use a lower threshold of a dollar because there are no books that cost $2,500 in the library. Um, we don't have a Gutenberg Bible. Uh, we don't, <laughs> not this week. Uh, but we could probably get one from most of <coughs> um, We write our collections off over uh, seven years, and it's all. It includes all of the uh, books and audiovisual uh, things and so forth. And um, it's actually the way that we've been operating the uh, fixed asset portion of our reporting. And this only affects. I just want to be clear. This only affects the reporting that goes into the audited financial statements. It doesn't. It doesn't affect the reporting that you get because. We're actually reporting to you on what's called a modified accrual basis, where if we, you know, if we buy a chiller, for example, it's accounted, it's accounted for as an expense as, a, as opposed to a fixed asset. And then we make all those adjustments at the end of the year. Um, so, you know, if you looked at any of your uh, financial reports that we've, you know, we've delivered over the years, uh, and looked in the footnotes, you'll find that this is synced to those footnotes. Um, and again, it's, you know, the auditors felt like we should formalize it. And uh, so it's a, actually a part of our, you know, part of our policies. So, I, I'm sorry, can you? Yeah, absolutely. So, I'm not sure, I'm totally understand So you're saying that this is what we've been doing already anyway, but this is just putting it into our policy. Right. Um, all right, fine. I know we do have audit new auditors this year, and they're going to be presenting in November, right? That's correct. And they'll give us a packet, something like that. Yes. By the way, if it's possible, if we could get the packet ahead of time. Some yeah, years, we, we always try to do that. Well, yeah. some years we've gotten yeah, it yeah, the yeah. and it, it's nice yeah. if we can get it ahead yeah. of time. Um, so perhaps they'll address this a little bit more at that time, too, yeah, I can imagine. Okay, thanks. Um, you know, I noticed under purpose it mentions that this um, policy is provided to control and accountability of our capital assets, which are needed for preparation of financial statements. So do we actually give them information about these items here, um, our capital assets, and yeah. if they reach a certain point, then I guess we toss them, they need to be aware of that? Oh, yeah. Okay, um, is that something this board should also be getting a copy of? I think we talked about that. Um, that we were gonna, last year we mentioned we kind of switched things around. Um, this isn't brought to the board for approval, but Susan takes care of it, but she's gonna let us know. So I was just wondering, have we had any capital assets from last year that have reached their capitalization threshold? And you got rid of them? Well, we put, you know, we, you know, we put the chiller on the roof. Well, I meant yeah. items that, you oh. know, it says here, collections, vehicles, equipment, furniture, fixtures. I mean, I haven't seen anything yet. Has anything <laughs> been removed from the library as, as like, all last year? Because nothing was brought to us. Well, sometimes, um, like, for example, the chiller, the old chiller was taken off of the roof 
and it was part of the uh, contract with uh, Acetelli to uh, provide the new chiller, uh, install it, and um, uh, commission it and get it ready, ready for usage. Uh, as part of that, to make room for the new chiller, they had to remove the old chiller, disconnect it from the uh, Sure, well, I HVAC understand. System. I think that's obvious. The chiller would, would be gone. But I'm asking, in this library, including collections, equipment, um, furniture, and fixtures, you know, we haven't gotten an update. Like, what I, happened I, last year? I remember, though, that we've had a, a uh, Susan and Greg had uh, <coughs> uh, something for us to vote on. To, to we voted that we would not approve it, and Susan said that she would, of course, let us know. No, 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 I'm sorry, Karen. I remember seeing uh, something they brought to us that said they had these number of items that they were going to either uh, put up for sale or donate. Could I, I get a copy of that? I, I don't, I remember us that? talking What's about it. Yeah, I don't recall it all in the past. <laughs> Does anyone else remember us talking about it? I remember us talking about it. Yeah, it's also something on technology, like when we get rid of computers, right. when we get new ones. But there yeah, hasn't yeah. been anything specific given to us regarding what they've gotten rid of in 20, in this last year. I mean, it's all been small things. I mean, we continuously weed the collection. We're always right. getting rid of the things that have been damaged or that are no longer needed so I, I would never be bringing that to you well actually um now that you mentioned books i remember walking through the back doors and there were huge um dumpsters filled with books going Correct. somewhere Correct. so that's a lot smaller than just a couple no i didn't say anything about a couple it's con we are continuously reading the collection but that also is where if people are cleaning out their garage and they bring us their old national geographics you know, well, some of those go directly into the dumpster, but but those things do go to a company. Anything that's well, like I'm aware of the process. I'm just asking when you get rid of fixtures, equipment, furniture that you let us know. I mean, we right. should be. We have not been getting rid of so it's all been small else, stuff. I'm not nothing's getting, been going out. Of the I have not been. It's at a certain level. We tell you. I'm not going to tell you every time I get rid of a tiny thing. Well, so, furniture, for example. So we're obligated to report to the board when um, we have items that have a, a current value of $100 or more. And when we do that, we uh, uh, we create, I can't remember if it's a resolution or an ordinance. Right, I remember we saw it. Right, and, and we say we're trying to get rid of this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Think right. back uh, to when we bought the uh, new van, mm -hmm. we, we wanted to get rid of the old yes, van. Yeah. And we needed your permission to get rid of the old van. Right. Uh, which I thought was uh, thirty five hundred dollars or four thousand or, yeah. or somewhere in there, and, you know. And uh, so those types of items, those items of value, we go ahead and we, you know, we formally approach the board. Now, uh, you know, in terms of uh, maintaining the, uh, uh, in terms of maintaining the collection in the library, uh, librarians are continuously weeding their um, their collections. They're looking for old, damaged, uh, unusable uh, types of um, types of books, and uh, uh, what they'll do is they'll pull them. Uh, they'll see if they can get a replacement. If they can get a replacement, they'll get a replacement. Or they'll see if they can repair it. Which, if they can repair it, they'll repair it. Um, if all is lost, then you know uh, that book will. Uh, will go into one of the uh, cloth carts in the uh, in the back uh, uh, in the back of the library for some sort of recycling, which may be into the dumpster or maybe into the sale. Um, in fact, well, that's covered under your other there on this page. Yeah. That if it has a market value of hundred dollars or more, right. the board must pass an ordinance. And I, and I know we have passed those ordinances. Can I please go I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. We need, a, we need a one minute break. One second. A water minute. <clears throat> yes. No, they have done that in the past. I don't know if they have done that in the past. Should they go right in the year? Uh, I think they've addressed the question. No, they question. don't bring it to us anymore. We don't need to approve it. Well, we haven't, uh, we haven't had we those type of... We haven't had those uh, type of... Uh, we haven't had a need to do that. You know, okay, uh, I was just asking because I didn't hear anything. Yeah. And then I just have one question also. Since you're following um, the, um, let's 
see what we call the standards of G A A P G A A F R. Are we joining any organization as well, or is this just the name of the standards you'll be following? These are the names of the standards that we're obligated to follow. Okay, so you don't. There's no um, membership or anything to an organization for any governmental financial. Um, I belong to the GFOA. But I meant, um, so does the but library this, follow <coughs> GFOA then? Is that, or no, is the GFOA personally? is like a trade association, just like the AICPA and the Illinois CPA Society. Right, I believe the village follows GFOA. They, well, GFOA is not a standard. And they, GAP and GAFA are the standards, basically, um, as well as GASP. Well, the village has mentioned that they use GFOA as their, that's their basis for their financial uh, reporting and what they do. So maybe being a member of GFOA may have some guidelines, and that's probably what I'm thinking of. It's, a, it's, an, it's an industry uh, organization. It's, a, it's an association, just like the uh, American Bar Association, um, which um, you don't follow the American Bar Association you know, uh, laws. You follow, you follow the laws of Illinois, the laws of the United States, the laws of Niles. Um, and GFOA is the same type of organization. It's an association. Uh, it's actually Government Finance Officers Association. Right, right. So it's not a promulgating body. I looked into it when I was questioning their budget processing compared to ours, and that's how I found out about it. But um, I must have been looking at it for a different reason. Thanks. Okay. Sue? Sounds good. Anything? Okay. Then you want to take a look? Karen? Uh, yes. Carolyn? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Sue? Yes. Great. Last, I need a motion to approve administration administrative policy 3.37 fund balances. Do I hear a motion on that one? So moved. Karen. Second. Give us second. Somebody else? Okay. All right. Greg, I'm going to give us a discussion on this one. Okay. Um, Unless you need a break. Do you need a break? No, I'm good. All right. So this is, uh, this is a fund balance uh, uh, policy. Um, and um, what we've been uh, doing is from time to time when the uh, board feels um, it's necessary, uh, it decides to transfer money from the general fund into the special reserve fund. Um, and um, when we do the, uh, you know, when we do the levy, we we uh, construct the levy in such a way that it puts money into the special revenue funds, you know, like, you know, the uh, audit, the liability insurance, social security, workers' compensation, unemployment compensation, and building the site funds. Um, so, uh, you know, I'll give you uh, some examples in, of the past. In uh, 2009, I believe, we had 1.7 million dollars in all of the special revenue funds, like the audit, and liability, insurance, and so forth. Um, that's about triple what we actually spend in a year. But this was about you know this was almost ten years ago. Um, over time, we've starved those funds and stopped putting money into them via the tax levy so that we could spend them down to a more reasonable level, okay? Um, at, the, um, at the end of this past year, this past fiscal year, the fund balances uh, for those funds were down to, I think, $116,000, which is about 20% or so of what we actually spend. So, you know, we've drained the funds and used them for the appropriate expenses, but we haven't put money into those funds. So we, you know, we've been creating um, fund balance policy around this table as we talk about things like the levy and the budgets and so on and so forth, and this formalizes it. Okay. So, um, you know, what what we have, uh, for example, 
is um, about, I'd say, like the, uh, uh, like below the halfway point where it says general fund, special reserve fund, and special revenue funds. Uh, we have targets um, in those in those funds now. So special revenue funds, for example, our target is between three and six months of expenditures, which is a much more reasonable balance. Uh, three months, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know if I turned that question. <laughs> I didn't have a question about that. Why only three to six months? Why not a year's worth of uh, expenditures? Uh, I, 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 that, I can't figure that out. Well, I mean, it, it, if you if the board decides they're more comfortable with the year, we can do that. Um, the the, uh, the challenge is, is, that, is if you put money into the special reserve fund, it's in the special reserve right. fund for that specific purpose. Right. And what that does is, what that does is, is in a sense, make, make it a restrictive, a restrictive balance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I, for the special reserves, I like, you know, I, I prefer to work a, with a little thinner margin on that. In transfer funds if needed? If needed. Okay. All right. Okay, so anyway, special uh, special revenue funds. Um, we have a target of between three and six months of expenditures. Uh, the special reserve fund, which is just above special revenue, is funded uh, through the um, through transfers from the uh, uh, general fund. Thank you. And then finally, the general fund is everything else, and. Uh, what what I put in here is a, a target of uh, six months of the annual budget. So that would protect us, for example, if uh, if the county, for whatever reason, as it has in the past, decided to, to, hold, back to hold back the taxes. Now, you know, I talk about that every year, yeah. but it's been quite a while you know, sure. mm -hmm. since that has happened. I, mean, that, I think it was Rod Lukovich. Uh, or, or get or something like that, that, you know, that did that maybe like 10 years ago. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, you would, in, in our current budget, it would be about 3.2, 3.2 3 million. Yeah, three, you know, three, three and a half, somewhere, mm -hmm. uh, somewhere in that range. Okay. You know, and then, of course, uh, under the general fund, um, it says that those fund balances are considered to be un unrestricted and balances above the six-month target may be transferred to the special revenue fund. But of course, that takes four acts from the snap. Something that you know, Susan and I can decide to do on our uh, on our right. And we're not uh, in this document. And I'm sorry, I took the burden, took my took your spot. Uh, we're not really targeting a sp uh, specific amount in this document for the special reserve fund. No. No, I, you know the thing about putting money into the special reserve is is that it can only be used for you know for one purpose. So right. what we try to do is uh, review the condition of the building and you know create plans based upon the feedback that we get, right. uh, and then uh, you know show those plans to the uh, to the board. Uh, you know every year in a, in the terms of a budget. And then every four to five years, in terms of, you know, in terms of a uh, uh, longer term plan, you know, once we update, we don't engage engineering type firms on an annual basis. We try to do that every four to five years. Great. All right. Is there anything else on this? Uh, I don't think I had any other questions on this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't stand. So in these three funds, are we uh, uh, <coughs> are the balances? Do they do they comport with the yeah, limits? Do they? <laughs> well, um, you know, as I said, the uh, uh, special revenue fund as a whole, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, is just around the target. Um, Based on you know some of the work that we've done and that we've shown mm -hmm. to the board, we're a little bit low in the special reserve fund. Mm -hmm. But my recommendation is not to make a wholesale transfer into that fund until you know until we're to the point where we're approving uh, contracts and so forth. Um, you know for the 
you know, for whatever capital project we have in front of us, mm -hmm. and then we run out of money. Uh, the thing that's not accounted for anywhere or reserved for in this special reserve is what the next renovation may look like. So just to refresh everybody's memory, in 2013 we had uh, a wall-to-wall -wall renovation um, that costs approximately five and a half million dollars. And about, what day was it, a million, a million five that went into the basement for the, uh, a million five? Oh, right. Yeah, so about a million five went in for the new boilers and, you know, uh, the new air handler, um, electrical systems, electrical systems and, mm -hmm. and so forth, which, you know, in, in the next 10 years are probably going to be every bit as good and every bit as serviceable as, as they are now mm -hmm. with, the, you know, with the care that we take with them. Um, but if you have a renovation of um, uh, equal magnitude, uh, for everything else, the library is going to need somewhere around four million dollars in order to do that renovation. And it may be a little bit higher because it'll be 15 to 20 years after the renovation uh, that took place in uh, 2013. Um, you know, so you know, it's something we should, you know, plan for, look into the future for, um, start to reserve. Uh, parts of the general fund balance for, um, you know, so that, you know, it's, it's uh, uh, a sure continuation of the existence of the library. Okay. Um, yeah, I had a question. Um, this paragraph, general fund, it says the unrestricted fund balance target should represent six months of operating expenditures, total expenditures minus capital park department. I guess that means the capital items. Um, it says balances above the six month target may be transferred to the special reserve fund. I would strongly not recommend doing that because we're gonna lock in money in special reserves and it's not necessarily earmarked, it's just going in there after our general fund has more than six months um, of operating expenditures in it. I, I just don't think that's a good move. Yeah. Well, the document says may, it doesn't yeah. say it has to, so it doesn't yeah. Say yeah, it's all. Um, great yeah. We have to yeah. yeah, we have to. So it's yeah. something yeah. we would have to. Approve. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. It's not an automatic thing. All right, thank you. Every time we do this transfer, it's a decision that we yeah, it's not a good idea to form one assessment. Karen, you had something else? I just had one other thing regarding the general fund program. Should, would, would it be more appropriate for you to say the unrestricted fund balance target should represent at least six months of operating expenditures? Sure, we can make uh, that uh, to, I think that's a good thing. Maybe change a little bit more accurate yeah, what, what our goal is. Yeah. Because represent six months <coughs> is kind of. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Very good. So, um, or we're going to uh, have a vote on the amended um, uh, policy. Diane, you want to take a look this? Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Diane? Yes. 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 This is not a, a discussion or another um, uh, in-depth analysis of it or uh, whatever, but Greg can just give us a rundown of what items were uh, we had budgeted for. Oh, you mean the one, I, the question I just asked? Well, it's on our agenda, right? So um, you put it on your agenda. Right. Uh, well, well, actually, I, I asked that on... Um, Never mind, go right ahead, it's fine. Did you want it or just not want it? Oh no, any information that you're willing to give me, I'll take from there, please. All right, Craig, do you want to give us a brief rundown of what the items were in the capital uh, plan, a budget that we had uh, done uh, for the capital <coughs> projects? Sure. Um, so this all starts when we uh, talk to our, uh, we talk, we talk to our uh, engineers at uh, Keller, and we talked to our uh, general contractor who helped us with the last uh, renovation at uh, Frederick, Frederick 
Quinn. Um, as, um, uh, as they go through their process, they put together a report, um, which, you know, is Excuse full. me, can I just add, just mention, I, I didn't want Greg to go through this huge litany. I actually expected to <coughs> sit down and go through all of the items and identify why they've been, wh whatever the description is from these two engineering firms and determine if there's any need for it, because a lot of it was not necessary. That was my purpose for capital uh, projects. For, for Greg to explain, you know, that he contacted Caller, I already know all that. I, I really just want to get, I want to zero in on the 80 some items and decide based on Caller and um, Frederick Quinn's recommendations, what are we going to do? Okay, well. In my opinion, which is a longer it's conversation. A very long. Yeah, session. so that's yeah. where that meeting thing yeah, came I in. You. I apologize. Yeah. Right. Okay. Didn't say that. Um, uh, it, yeah, let's talk about that as, as a board then. In, in my opinion, uh, when each of those items comes up, that uh, Greg and Susan have done their investigation on the need to actually um, move forward on it. I think that's when we can have that discussion on that particular item. Uh, at this, well, this is my opinion. Um, at, uh, to go through each individual one at this point, when we've just done a just general budget for it, uh, I think maybe we don't have all the information that would be necessary. For You're talking about 1.9 million in capital, not the total 3.6, which was but which which capital projects are you talking about? The 1.9, which is in our budget or in our special reserves now. I was talking about the capital plan, which is almost 3.6 million. That's what I was talking about reviewing, which is even lengthier. And, um, well, either way, it only, I, my, this is just my opinion. The board can decide whatever they want. In my opinion, each item is, a, is presented by Susan and Greg to move forward on it. I think that's when the end of discussion about whether or not we should do it should have it. Just my opinion. Okay, and I'm just saying to, to give us three point, almost three point six million dollars for the capital projects that obviously aren't even necessary is something we should clean up so everyone's not worried about needing three point six million dollars when we're not. But honestly, I think um, our our typical um, method here is the board, the administration brings something to us, and you got fifteen minutes to vote. I thought this was something we should have spent a lot more time on. But whatever this board decides, I understand. Thank you. I, I feel like we're um, not entirely understanding what this is. The first page and partway down the second page are things that came out of the engineering report. They are projected out through 2024, and there's the column that just says thereafter. So, for example, the replacement of the copper roof. We know at some point it will need to be replaced, but we don't even have a date on that yet. But we still need to be making sure that it's that when it, the time comes that we have the money. All of the other things on this list are more technology and internal things, have nothing to do with the, with the uh, engineering reports. And they're all things that will be coming to the board um, as it's time to replace, say, the staff printers. That's, you know, those are specific things the board may decide we don't want to have to replace the ceiling in the commons but you know but we put it in here because it seems like a thing that we ought to be looking at pretty soon but it will still be coming to the board to decide because we cannot spend a dime out of the special reserve without the board approving it so I just wanted to clarify it's not all things that came out of the engineering report and it's not all for this year the 190 is for this year and most of it is of course the roof um, and I just I have to keep saying I don't know why people are saying a roof that is in fair condition shouldn't be replaced I'm not I could never as the director recommend to you that you wait until the roof is in poor condition before you start discussing <coughs> And most people think it's the best practice to do the whole roof at once. But we haven't brought that to you yet, and we will not bring it to you until we have the actual facts and figures and exactly how much it would cost. And, the, and it won't happen unless the board approves it, and you're not levying for it. So it, it's just stuff that we know is coming down the pipe. We want you to be informed. And we're trying to 
you know, keep track of the things that are going, you know, it's a, it's a million little things. We don't want Rich to come to us this year and say, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention we're going to need a, t a ton of new barcode scans, scanners. We're, we want to know. So we're trying to give you all the information that we have. So we're trying to give you more, not less. So list of things that might happen that that's right. Will happen. Well, thank you for bringing up technology, and now that you did, technology and administration, I realize, are not from the engineers. But um, we do need to review just what we think technology should consist of because we're on this like automatic treadmill of replacing, 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 and the the computer, the computers, and a lot of the technology in this library does not necessarily need to be replaced as often as we are replacing it. We really should take the time and you know. Get a closer look at what's going on. And the same thing okay. with the administration's right. request. So you know? when when those items come up for discussion, then that's when. And, and we I just say, in work. fairness, we waited seven years the last time before we replaced the computer. Well, since again, we like since we have this document, when it was given to us, it should have been scheduled to be reviewed, and instead of waiting incrementally to talk about something and. It's going to just fly by. I mean, we don't take the time to evaluate right. anything. Okay, I understand. That's my All opinion. All right. So, um, anybody else have any comments on this? Um, I'm okay with discussing these items as they come up, since yeah. this is a future document of things that might happen, not necessarily will happen. I, I, I agree. And yeah. this, these are things we might do, and we might do them in the years indicated, or we might do it the year before or after. Nobody has a crystal ball. It's just an estimate of uh, what we're going to need. Whether we do it or not, we'll decide when we get to that point. And how much we pay, we'll decide that too. It will depend on the bids that we get. Uh, I think it just, it just makes sense to look ahead and say, looks like we are going to have to spend approximately this amount of money on approximately this day to know roughly how much money we're going to need to keep our library running in the future years. I just want to say that I appreciate the transparency and I really like the list even though we might not do it in that one year that it's pre-planned because we don't know but I do like the way it is it's put together I think it's extremely professional I think it's very important that we actually look at all these items and we can't look at them now like Carolyn is suggesting because we don't know, like Tim and Karen just said, we don't know when these will actually, will possibly need to replace them. However, this list is, to me, very, um, I mean, very, uh, just looking forward and being responsible for the sustainability of our building. And technology, a lot of times when we do change technology because the, um, we don't the warranties. Any, yeah, we don't have thank you. We don't have the warranties, and then when we, you know, you have to figure out the balance and what's really the best thing to do. And we do decide that as a board. So well, thank you. Uh, let me add just a couple of things. Um, we actually buy extended warranties on, on IT equipment so that we are covered, and and we don't have to pay for a whole lot of uh, the repairs out of pocket. Mm -hmm. And that gives us extra added protection. Right. What actually happens with uh, computer equipment is that every year, um, Intel or AMD or you know, pick your chip maker mm -hmm. comes out with a new chip that's advanced and that has different functionality to it. As this happens, and you know this, Tim, as this happens, software writers write software to take advantage of the functionality in the new chip. Okay. For a long period of time, they'll continue to support old versions of their software that are appropriate for the old chips. But at some point, as they move forward, they stop supporting the old versions and completely drop them from their development cycle altogether. Right. So you you know um, uh, companies you know usually. Um, replace it, you know, large companies usually are on a three year to five year replacement cycle, usually, you know, somewhere in there, either extreme. 
Um, and we try to hit up a six year replacement cycle. The last time we replaced all the computers that the students said was after seven years. And I got to tell you, it was, you know, it was like a revolutionary uh, upgrade. We had to go through a lot of retraining, you know, in order to bring everybody up to speed because we, I think we jumped two uh, operating system uh, versions. So, you know, it's, um, uh, it's a conservative approach and we do try to make it last as long as we possibly can. Uh, the servers that we'd like to replace this year uh, I believe they're on their eighth year, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and Rich has done an outstanding job, you know, trying to make sure that um, all of our servers are maintained and are up to date. And you know, and he does the incremental maintenance um, as uh, as best he can. But eight years is a very long time. It's a very long time. And uh, so, you know, we do try to be careful with the library's money and get as much out of it as we possibly can. I want to uh, just add uh, one other thing. Um, you know, I was looking at some old numbers, um, like why not, right? And you know, during the period of time when we, uh, when the library did the renovation, uh, it actually budgeted a total of fifteen million dollars in on the capital uh, project line. Okay. Yeah, in one year it was about three million. The following year it was six point one million, and then the following year it was five million. And all together it adds up to about fifteen million. And what the reason I bring that up is, you know, because when uh, we talk about things like one point nine million dollars, it's a lot of money, mm -hmm. but. You know, we budgeted $15 million because of the uncertainty around when those projects would actually, you know, fall and actually have to be funded for a five and a half million dollar project. You know, so, you know, for the, for the capital budgets, it's less of a science than for the operating budgets. We have things that we'd like to keep an eye on, we have things that we'd like to advance to the board, we have things that we ought to uh, seriously, you know, think about getting it into the short-term plan. It may be within the fiscal year horizon, it may not. I mean, we may be at uh, a similar spot 12 months from now, where we didn't spend the money this year, but we have to spend it shortly into the next fiscal year. You know, just, you know, just to kind of give you an example of uh, the kinds of things that, the kinds of uncertainties that are in the, the capital budget. The other thing I want to mention is that um, uh, around the table, we have these reports, and you have them with, with you, Diane, um, from Calor and from uh, Frederick Quinn. And we're putting, in some cases, a lot of faith <coughs> into the numbers that they put in front of us. Okay, I just want to give you two bits of data. The first is when we last year we uh, we painted the building, and the estimate that we had uh, from uh, Frederick Quinn to paint the entire building was I don't know a hundred thousand dollars or thereabouts. It's a big building, and there's a lot of scaffolding involved and and so forth. And you look at it, you say, okay, I can kind of see that. It was $46,000 is what, when we actually got down to bidding and qualifying our uh, bidding companies to make sure that they were paying prevailing wage and, and have them in a competitive situation, it was $46,000. I'm sorry, it might have been forty nine. Um, so, you know, it was off by a pretty significant amount. You know, by the same token, when we, when we caught the windows, um, I believe the estimate was around twenty-five thousand dollars, and that contract was a hundred and six. So yeah, these people are around this type of work and and uh, and so forth. I'm not sure that they put the kind of due diligence into the numbers that they provide to us 
So you have to kind of take them with a grain of salt and, and but work with them because it's it's all that you have. You know, an, another data point is the chiller on the roof. Um, I know this is horrible stuff. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Calor, who was you know responsible for advising us on, on that particular piece of equipment said that that piece of equipment to replace would be two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. It wasn't. Yeah. It was about 150. You know, so you know, you know, you you, you know, you, you look at things, and you know, maybe they haven't done a chiller in a few years, or maybe they just did one, and their information is you know more on point. You know, those numbers move, um, but when we go through the bidding process and we write a specification and we send it out, that's you know, that's when we get the numbers that we can nail down. And that's when we get a contract that somebody will deliver on a day for a price. So, yes. Yep. So I think it's fair to assume that the consensus of the board is that we don't need to go into specific detail in any of these since we don't, that it is just a general um, estimate of what it might cost in mm -hmm. a future sure. days. And it is a list. It's just a list, right. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Greg. All right, Carolyn, you had asked about forming three board committees. Let's talk about the first one first, a facilities committee. Could you provide the goal and the purpose of this facilities committee? Well, actually, um, all the committees, the um, they would all be created for fact-finding information, which we currently don't have. All right, so I, I want to talk about them individually. So, that so the, board the facilities decide. meeting would be created mm -hmm. um, for starters um, for fact finding um, as a board we do not have any information about much of anything but it's important to have um, our staff available to us in a meeting setting where they can provide us with pertinent details of their their area and their responsibilities. Facilities is involved with equipment, there's maintenance arrangements, and I always felt that um, if we took the time to discuss what our, um, what's, what we need as far as facilities and having a, um, a board with staff members, residents, and trustees, we'd be able to come up with a lot of probably ideas and ways to consider doing different things. We, we have a very select group here, and we have a huge um, library district with so many knowledgeable people who would be willing to come in and just participate. But more importantly for us as a so board... So how many are you envision? Um, I don't know, but can I finish? More importantly as a board, that five or ten minutes of you know Susan and Greg speaking and then we vote is, is really not the way to totally understand for example, whatever's going on in this building relating to facilities. Um, I, don't, I don't know. Um, it depends on the library board's interest. Would it be um, a, live, uh, a meeting of the whole? I don't know. Um, that would be up to them. I don't even know if there's any interest for everyone to want to be on a committee. You know, other libraries... So let me ask, let's stop you there, though. If, if more than three... If more than two members of the board are on a committee, it would have to be an open meetings. Well, you know, they, sh they should it's, be open. It's actually it's it's actually a majority of a quorum of the body. Mm -hmm. So if you say um, if you say, okay, we have two trustees that are going to comprise this committee. Any time they meet, it it falls under the open meetings act. There doesn't well, get five. Because there's two. No, no, no. A, a, quorum, a quorum of the body. The body is the committee. So if you have two people, a quorum is any time they meet because, yeah. Well, we don't follow that at all. I mean, well, we well, talk about no, no, each committee. other. We're talking about, you're talking about committees. We haven't had committees for years. Correct. And a committee, it usually has been maybe three people in the past. Uh, so you, even when they're, um, when they, even when a quorum of that committee meets, it has to follow the, stuff, the open meetings act. So even if you, let's say you have a three-person committee, a uh, quorum is two people. 
Yeah. So even if those two people were meeting to talk about business, we should comply with the open meetings act. Well, we did, Carolyn and I were we should. a technology committee member, and we met with Susan and Greg. We didn't, it wasn't an open meeting, we just went and talked to them. Well, if, they, if you're just listening to someone, if you're just listening this to someone, a, this is a committee that will be formed. That I, I know, but you, remember you and I were on a technology committee. I don't, I don't think it was really yeah, was it just a, I know we did yeah, that, remember? I don't no. think it was really formed yeah. in the sense of... Yeah, because Linda was the president. No, I thought it was dissolved. And you and well, it I was said, dissolved, but when we were on it, we didn't. It was in an open meeting. We just. Well, I think we just yeah. should have understood the rules. So it was early on in my tenure, and we just didn't understand. There were four. Remember? Well, that's right. You and I did meet. Yeah. But did we form the committee? Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, it was an actual committee. No, but what I'm saying, it just consisted of you and me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was on the board. Yeah, but the, no, what I'm thinking of is a committee, a few board members, the staff members pertinent to facilities or technology yeah. or whatever the committee. Okay, well, that's what we did. And then have a couple of residents in that well, area. Well, we didn't have residents, but we had, it was the same thing. You and I were on the, we were from the board. We I know, were on but the that committee. was very minuscule, I think. <coughs> what I'm thinking of is. Uh, okay, but I'm just talking about open meeting. We didn't, I, and yes. maybe we were wrong. We didn't <laughs> yes. follow the open right. meeting. We and just, we should. Uh, we I agree. Sure. And I'm fine with open meetings. But what I'm saying is, uh, the purpose of a committee is for long-range planning, maybe not that long, but some sort of planning um, as the um, vision, and then getting the information we need from our departments, which not only helps us make decisions, but it would educate all of us. Because we have very limited details about anything. So that's why I wanted to form these committees. So your facilities committee is uh, fact-finding for long-range planning. You want to have staff, residents, and trustees on it. That's what your vision is. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. What was that? So your fact-finding for your facilities committee yeah, you want to have it for a long-range planning. Uh, you want to have staff, residents, and trustees on the committee. Uh, and you want to discuss equipment and maintenance and other facilities. That's what I was writing. Well, whatever facility, whatever pertains to the facilities department, that's something we should be a little more closely connected with. And maybe not long-range planning, but how about for, you know, the year? The point is, once you become aware of what's going on in the library, you don't have to have, um, you know, so so many meetings. But we we don't have we don't have a relation with the staff with what's going on. We come to this board meeting, and that's the limit of our information. And other libraries and other governmental agencies just automatically create their committees for the purpose of getting information to make better decisions. And facilities so, is one. So what would the committee provide to the board then? Right now we have $3 million worth of facilities um, capital projects. I mean, a little more in-depth information. I don't know. What else needs to be done in the building? What's now, going asking, on? Maintenance would, would the committee chair then present information to the, meet to the board in general? Is that what your vision is? Oh, absolutely. The purpose of, of the committee would be to... To, to come up with answers regarding certain aspects of that of that committee, facilities has its own range of things. But whatever the whatever the topic of discussion at that time, or the purpose of that um, topic, would then be <coughs> brought to the board. But it would be brought to the board a lot more thoroughly than just 15 minutes or 10 minutes that we get. I mean, the information we receive is very superficial. None of us really have a good idea of what goes on in this library. And technology is even more massive. Okay, well, let's open it for discussion. Karen, yeah, go ahead. Um, so my feeling about committees is that um, it can work sometimes if there are some topics that there are only a few board members that are interested in and the other board members are willing to defer to the judgment of those few people on the committee. Let's say there's three people on the committee, and the other members of the board uh, don't go to the committee meeting. The committee hears the information, they make a recommendation to the board, 
and the rest of the board members are willing to follow the recommendation. But, but what has happened, I've found in, in many times in the past, is the staff will present all the information to the committee, and the committee will come back to the board as a whole, but then everyone else in the board wants to hear the same information too. They want to hear the whole presentation too. So what happens is the staff puts the exact same presentation on twice. Um, so I wouldn't have an objection to a committee of the whole, um, where we, you know, if there is a topic that we want to devote an evening to, and everyone can attend, and everyone can hear the same thing. It's I, not my idea of a committee. Okay. It's not one topic. Well, it's, I mean, it's you could devote it to one topic. It's the department in general. We'd have to come up with a with a list of what our purpose is in terms of that department. Um, and yeah. I will admit, yeah, and I mean this in the... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. So, so just, just to finish, uh, again, if we wanted to devote an extra board meeting to a certain topic, uh, I don't object to that, or if we wanted to create a committee as a whole, so we could all come in and look at a certain topic in an evening or two. Um, I don't uh, have any problem with that. That might work fine. Uh, my only concern about creating committees is that it, it only works in a situation where most of the board members are willing to defer to the judgment of the three members who are on a, sub on a committee and, and not insist on hearing it all over again themselves. Because if you do, what, what's the point? It, you know, you might as well have everyone here to, be, to begin with. You know, I'll be honest with you, the committees at this library are not at all like the committees I've seen at other governmental bodies. And, and I know these weren't very successful and there's all these negative issues. Um, I don't think an entire board wants to be at every meeting. And I don't know that we're going to be re-presenting a presentation. It's really information about whatever is happening at the time regarding that, like, regarding facilities. Maybe three um, trustees could come to the meeting, but we're not going to come to the board meeting and say, this is what we decided. I mean, there's a topic of discussion, and the staff are the people who are presenting the information to us. That's how we become more knowledgeable. And then based on the discussions and, and what transpires, then we could bring a recommendation to the full board. But I think to discuss what the three trustees discussed in the meeting wouldn't be so lengthy or you know, you know, out of control. I'm not sure. Um, I was on a committee before when we did, was it Buildings and Grounds, I think, mm -hmm. when Barbara was here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we met, I don't know, three times maybe. I don't mm -hmm. remember much about it as far as with coming to the board with what we said, so far, little, little found or anything. I really don't remember. It was quite a few years ago. Next. Next. I feel like that, I mean, it's acceptable, but I feel that there needs to be a purpose. I, I just yes. can't see the reason. <laughs> just, okay, we're going to talk about facilities, so let's get together and I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. But exactly what is the purpose? I it doesn't have a goal. I don't. I could present a goal if that's what you want. I'm not ready to present a goal because I haven't discussed well, it with facilities. You can start with one of your thoughts. You come with then a purpose, a goal. Bring it to us and see if it would even be feasible to ask staff. Residents, how will you get them involved? Well, so many residents are interested in participating. At least that's what I'm hearing, so then I'll start calling them back. I still don't understand what the end product will be, except... Personally, I like to hear what everybody has to offer. So if From you invite department. staff, I'd like to hear what they say instead of listening what you think they have Well, said. there'd be minutes in a recording. 
Okay. I'm trying to say that you're not going to get my opinion. You're going to get the same information I get, whether it's and it's not and it to be if there's minutes, they're just they're minutes, and they are verbatim. Okay, that's what I'm familiar with. No, I'm not trying to impress my opinion upon anybody. I'm trying to say as a board, we lack a lot of knowledge and information. Let me just jump to technology as an example. There's there's so much going on in technology, and we really need to spend more time up front evaluating it. We talk about upgrading this and upgrading that. Just a new system could cause us to need a new phone, a new this, a new that. We need to be more aware of how everything is affecting us, and we need to decide if everything that's upgraded is necessary. Or even databases that we use in the library, who that's under programs, who's, who's actually aware of well, I think Susan, and Susan is totally aware of. But we're not. Yeah, I don't see any of that information. It's not your child. Okay, yes, it is. No, Every you know, you, she works for you. Okay. And you take databases are one of the most expensive items in this library, and we have no idea about or maybe their you usage. Need, you need to try to find out the information as much as you can. No, I really you need to use the database. Maybe you need to use the database. I'm well aware of them. Okay. I want to know how much we pay and know. what the usage is. Susan's already brought us that information years ago. I when I brought it up, that. and then we made some changes because the usage was rather low. What I'm saying is, we should be doing things ongoing, not just you know spur the moment. I don't want Greg coming to me and saying what kind of. Uh, oh, he wouldn't be part of this, yeah. should I? Because I don't know. Oil Why based. not? I, Closest. I, I just don't. If there was something that we, the library was planning, maybe a committee would be in order. Well, your spending is definitely one thing. Your planning for the future is another thing. Can we just go around? Yeah, okay. Sure, go right ahead. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't, Diane, do you have more to say? No, I'm done. Okay. okay. I think I'm just not sure. Okay. So, um, what I'm hearing is upfront evaluating it, um, gathering information, data collection. Um, all of this is <coughs> not the trustee's position. We do give our we give our I don't know stand. whatever we we let you control that. Mm -hmm. We let Susan control that. She's our director, and then we have the the you know linear underneath. We have Greg, and then we have our departments department heads. They choose, they look at things, they look at the stats, they're constantly evaluating, we've discussed this over and over again. In my mind, what is being said here, to me, and this is my opinion, it sounds micromanaging. And I am completely against that. So, I will look through things myself, I will, I cannot... I mean, when we do facility, we will go through these things. I will ask my questions. I'm sure Dave will hear. I'm sure that Rich will be here. I'm sure that all the department heads will be here when we discuss the certain pieces. That's what I would want. I would not want it siloed into a department, I mean, into a, um, a tech, not, or a, I'm sorry, a uh, committee. It's my opinion. Um, I would like to ask questions about concerns and have that facility manager present at that time and to make those decisions at our meetings, again, with a, with a board as a whole. That is my opinion. And Tim, I'm kind of new at this trustee thing. Could you give me um, a specific, what is the role of a trustee as far as governing of the library? Uh, the role of a trustee primarily is to uh, hire a director when the need arises. It is to manage the director who then manages the rest of the library. And it is to um, set the budget, set the levy, and then um, manage, uh, overview the expenditures of the library. That's the primary purpose. Secondary purpose is to approve policies uh, 
uh, per the um, management of the library. It, it seems like the job of oversight of staff is not in that Correct. description. It is not. And I, it sounds like that's the type of committee that you're recommending. No here. oversight, not at all. Well, it, if oversight to me I, means that you want, look, that's you're going in and digging deeper into information that's already been attained oh by no, the people that have been hired by the board and the, the, the people that the director has hired that are capable and qualified and, you know, uh, have a very good knowledge and grasp of all this stuff. Mm -hmm. and none of us here have this, the same knowledge and grasp of any of the types of things that individuals on this staff have and that their consultants have, that they have vetted and, and hired. And so I'm not sure what the value of taking more time, it's 9.30 at night, out of our volunteer days mm -hmm. to sit around and litigate or listen and you know ask questions that maybe aren't really within our perfect you know it's not really the job of a trustee as a trustee we are responsible for all the spending in this library to be responsible for spending we need to be aware of the details we never receive. take a look at all this paper there's pages and pages I know, and pages and, and pages there's no in-depth detail presentations i know there's no detail there's a no, I'm talking about facts and data. We do not. There is a ton of facts me. and data. We do not excuse me. I, it's my turn to talk. Excuse go, me, but go. it is my turn to talk. Let's, let's go ahead. And I feel that that this board, and I know them very well from when I used to work here, and I know many, many libraries and many, many library boards. And first of all, committees are very unsuccessful on the most part because of what Karen just pointed out. Somebody comes in, there may be one person on that committee that has their own agenda, they want to present their facts, their, their alternative facts perhaps, and then the rest of the board's like, well that doesn't make any sense, so can we have the whole presentation? And then it's it's really a waste of time. I think that really, um, it's, a, it's a level of having trust and responsibility, and it sounds to me like you really don't have trust in the professionalism and the qualifications of the people that are running the library. You know, I'm looking for information and that's why I wanted to create committees because we do not receive details about anything and I want to be more knowledgeable in my decisions. I'm not trying to to oversee staff at all and unfortunately the people on this board have had a terrible experience with committees. The village has a committee. Every trustee is responsible for an area in the village as a trustee and they are to go to the police department or whatever department in the village they're responsible for and they do work with the department and their future goals and whatever their accomplishments are. It's not micromanaging. It's our role to be more informed and to make better decisions. But more importantly, based on this library, we do not receive any data whatsoever on anything. We get all generalities. We get a lot okay. of paper, but there's not a lot of details. A lot of That's all I'm looking for. Yep, I understand. Seems like there's a disagreement over that. Absolutely. The so, definition of the uh, evidence. Sounds like a uh, um, uh, consensus is that. Yeah, here, go. Caroline, I just have a question for you. Let's say we did set up committees. And you weren't brought any of the committees. Would you be willing to defer to the judgment of the other members and, and not hear the information directly yourself? Absolutely, but my you my, might my purpose. You are willing really not to come to the committee meetings and just to defer to the other members. Who well, if you don't want me to come to a committee meeting and none of you want to be on a committee meeting, what type of information are you going to bring me? That's one. I'm no, 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 I, I'm asking you. If the rest of us were on committees and we heard the information. And you didn't happen to be on those committees. And you brought the detailed information to me, a copy of the recording, so I can listen to it, then I would have no problem. Just like I would provide to you. Because since you all don't look at details the way I do, I wouldn't be so sure. But I'd be glad not to sit on that committee just to give you that privilege. So what I'm hearing is uh, you have said it a couple of times, you don't feel you get the detail that you need. What I would then recommend is that you um, come with your recommendations of what details you would like for whatever topic that you're talking about, bring it to the board and we can then decide if we would like to ask Susan and Greg to provide those details to us. I think that would suffice to solve the problems. 
Well, you know what, actually, um, to that note. But maybe not tonight. I believe um, since 2015, <laughs> since 2015, I've gone to Susan, I've gone to Greg, and I've asked for information regarding our budget that we do not receive. Oh. And this board decided it's too much work. They don't want it. I shouldn't have it. So I still can't get the pertinent details well, in order to make a decision. Decided, if you brought, bring your recommendation. No, I'm done. I'm right. done making recommendations. Okay, well then you don't have to do it anymore. You don't, you, none of you want to take the time, none of you want to give me the information even though you don't want it, and you don't well, want this, to this, accept... it acts as a board. The board acts as a group. I know, and, and so. we have, we make blanket decisions constantly, you know, right. without basic, it's, it's just, it's a, it's a shame how we waste our time and we shame to get details. Well, we have, the, the whole purpose of a, of a group of people is to have multiple opinions. And then to come to a consensus that everybody can agree with everybody else on everything. So uh, I believe the consensus of this uh, group tonight is we're not. We just no, that finding doesn't seem to have made an impression on anyone. That's fine. I just brought it up. Okay. All the right. Village, well, the village has many. I'm words, sorry. But this it's is not an indictment on the village shh, manager shh, or the finance. Shh, but just like I'm sorry. Sure. This is not an oh, open please, forum. please. This is not an open forum. Please. I appreciate it, but it is not. Thank you. I have to say, for the record, I always want to give the board the information that they're looking for. I do want you to have the facts. We try very hard to provide you the facts. We never submit purchase requests that don't have all of the information that we had. It's just that it's our job to collect the information, not the job of a trustee to collect the information. Carolyn has asked for the preliminary budgeting documents from the departments where they're laying out their hopes and dreams for what we will put in the budget. And I have never thought that was appropriate to be sharing with the board. That, that is one thing she has asked for that I have not given her. I give her everything else she asks for. No, we no. don't. And so, I didn't ask for hopes and dreams. I asked for department operating budgets, which I found out never existed, but you denied me anyway. So we can go round and round here. You don't get, have any. Pro, you won't. You refuse to give me a copy of the program report that Cindy Rademacher was working on for three years. For three, three times I requested it. Three times she refused to give it to me. I mean, it's endless. Okay. But yet I should vote right. on a budget. Well. So unfortunately, we cannot have committees. That's fine. Okay. Very good. All right. Um, is there anything in other? Karen. No. Nothing. Katie. No. Dan. Do we ever address uh, comments of the public? Do we ever in any way address at a later date in writing? We said we know. As, a, oh, as a board? Yeah, um, I don't, if there's an issue that comes up that requires us as a board to address it, I, I, we generally don't. Because they, they many times have misinformation that they speak of. And so we just sit here and listen to the misinformation, the wrong data, the wrong numbers, statistics. They blurt it out, it's out in the public, and we don't address it. Just wondering. Um, that's a good point. Um, we have not, uh, you would have to bring a specific example, and then I guess we would create a document and public. I don't, I don't know where we would yeah, do no, it. How would we go about fine. doing it? Because it off. <clears throat> so, my recommendation that we all look at that um, everything Niles um, uh, group was part of that because there was a lot of misinformation that was put out on that particular mm -hmm. site, and I was trying to address a lot of that myself. Um, if we don't interact with each other, then mm -hmm. you know it doesn't violate mm -hmm. the Open Meetings Act. I was I was addressing it more as a yeah, I guess I was addressing it Mr. President, but I never said Tim's from the president of the last library. It was just a you know back and forth discussion with people. Uh, but to your point, yes, I if if you have a I, I don't even know how we would go about it. Yeah, yeah, you have noticed sure. this has been going on for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Just a comment. Sure. I, I actually like what you said. Yeah, I think that's great. Even with um, it's 
Mr. Yosel. Yeah. I mean, even with Mr. What Mr. Yosel had said um, about the nonfiction and uh, reference books and increasing them, and um, I'm just a librarian myself, and I know that in this time and age, and, and obviously the director can speak more, we have more databases that have the reference and nonfiction within it. We have more resources than we ever can visually see because we have purchased so much virtually that everyone in their own homes can use now. They don't have to always come into the library and have them. So another case doesn't necessarily re represent the wealth of the um, resources that we hold in the library. We have so much more than we ever had in the past in nonfiction right now with um, nonfiction and reference is is booming, um, especially uh, more nonfiction, um, let's see, like what would you call it when the, uh, um, like, I can't think of the word right now. But anyway, it's, I'm just saying, we really have so much here, and that doesn't all automatically represent in the, the case. Well, so actually, you know, I just wanted to just yeah. kind of say that. Yeah. You know, we, you might see and be like, oh my gosh, that's all we have. But sometimes print is getting less and virtual is getting more. Mm -hmm. I was surprised as a, as a digitally involved young millennial that he wanted, he was advocating for more reference books. Yeah, he's right here. Oh, is he still here? Who's still here? I'm talking to you. 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 So that they're not thinking that we're not listening. Yeah, I think that's you're right. You know, Absolutely. Um, so I just happened to pick your name. Yeah. yeah. So May I so respond really quickly to that? Yes. Why not? It's not an open meeting. It's not an open meeting. Sorry. You're right. I, I can't. I, you're right. 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 You are absolutely right. You can. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. Okay. If you did. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything bad to anyone. You are absolutely right. right. You were. If you <laughs> did, I would have to bang the gap. <laughs> no, but thank you. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Um, you know, just to the point about um, public comments, I thought we um, had decided that when taxpayers came here and asked questions, that when they sign in, they would either leave an address or an email, and we were going to get back to them. Did we change our mind? I don't think we did. I, I think we did talk about that. Yeah, we I did think talk we, about that. Uh, encourage people to do that, but I don't think we can force them to put their email down or... But what I'm saying is, people else. ask questions, did yeah. we check to see if they've done that so we can respond? Yeah, so we had... If people have a specific question, uh, our administration can get back to them. We had... Okay, so uh, Tisha did not, Matthew did not, Myrna did not, uh, Stephen did not. Did not put his email in there, so I did Okay. So, uh, well, you know what? We should Dale remind not, them. We should remind them again if you'd like a response, because I think I mentioned that as well. That sure. We say we that. Have it on there. Because what? Myrna asked the question. Yeah, but she didn't give us anything. All right. Uh, no, you're, okay, fine. No way to uh, contact her. However, maybe the way the sheet is written, does it, have, does it just say, please? Maybe if you want questions answered, please. Uh, it says yeah. optional. Contact information if you'd like to receive a response. Oh, Address, okay. telephone, Perfect. email. I just don't okay. But I, I would just remind them because sometimes they miss well, us. I mean, okay, we'll do it next time. I mean, that's like we're sure. trying to be. But no, that's good. Yeah, no, you're, you're right. You. We'll, we'll make, we'll, we'll, um. Okay, and then. Do 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 Some lady who did remind everybody, in fairness. I think it was her or her. They, yeah, uh, very courteous to everybody. I'm sorry. Okay. No, that's okay. Thank you. She nice. did remind me. Yeah. One of them did. I don't remember. Yeah. Okay, but I did have a question regarding everything Niles. Yes. I can't tell you how many people contacted me about all that was going on there. I am already a member, um, but I had no interest in going back and forth with everything. But I am concerned, you talk about um, um, factual information not getting out. Um, I had gotten some calls that I think, Tim, it was you who was answering a lot of questions or giving a lot of opinions. My you opinion, mentioned yeah. that um, when you came on board, 
at, or after Morgan Gubio left and you became a trustee, that the library was in, um, did you say in a deficit or something? Yeah, I remember looking at Which that budget and realizing, true. well, I remember seeing that we were spending more than the uh, levy was for that particular year. So I'd have to go back and Well, I'm not sure what you looked at, but he did cut the budget by, I don't know, maybe almost a million. <coughs> cut the levy by we, we were not suffering at all, um, in no way. Um, actually, actually, well, I'm, I have to stop. Uh, my is recollection is, is that. Is I just want you, yeah. well, you know what, though? You're, you represent the, the library board, and you're the president. So anything you say <coughs> should be factual, and people take it as gospel. I mean, I had to prove what you said wasn't correct. Like, I didn't have enough to do to prepare for the board meeting, but I had all these people coming at me with all these comments, and a lot of them weren't accurate. So I had to end up sending them emails with figures. And well, they should have asked me that. They're well, you already told them the wrong thing, so now they're coming to me, and I'm saying, you know, it was just... So uh, I think I, I think it's sure. nice to talk to people, turn, but we need to be, you know, as soon as I'm finished, you could have your turn, yes, yeah. we'll see. But I think it's important that we watch what information we put out. It's, yeah, I, I agree. It's very important. I have a lot of experience with Facebook And then groups. one other thing, I'm not finished. Um, there was a comment about um, a resident passing out some flyers or talking about the um, the budget and that, I think it's, here it is, that we're uh, about almost 50, our budget in five years has increased almost 50 percent. Now these are not exact budget figures, they're estimates, and if you, um, if you, um, if you determine, if you divide the 2015 all, uh, budget up to the 2019-20, it's actually a 43% increase. So, you know, the guy wasn't off that much, and if the budget was, if these budget figures were accurate, the difference between the 2015-16 budget mm -hmm. and the 2019 probably would have been about 50%. So he wasn't too far off. Yes, but he was including the capital expenditure, which I had, again, I'll bring it up, capital expenditures coming out of our reserve funds. Now, let me finish. Coming out of a reverse, he, he failed to give a reasonable uh, explanation of what that means, okay? As you're well aware, as having been the treasurer for a couple of years, the budget is what we really want to focus on is our operating budget. Okay. That's not what he was focusing on. The so budget I just, I ordinance even... has an amount on it. That's your budget. Yes. If you decide that your um, capital is not part of your budget, I don't know how you I can take it off. Carolyn, I didn't say it wasn't part but of the budget. But my point is the budget amount oh that was filed by right, the whatever, ordinance whatever, Carolyn. is correct and they <coughs> should be used. All right, but well, I have an opinion and I voice my opinion to him. So okay, what is your I'm point? Just saying, I'm just saying what that maybe point? our opinions need to be factual or we well, should my, give them my opinion since was we're trustees. I took out, all I told him, all I said was that you take out the capital from the budget and you've got an operating expense. It's, what is it what is incorrect about that statement? That the budget his that he said the increase in the budget since twenty fifteen was 50%. Exactly. And I said that he wasn't giving an act a, a fair assessment of what we were talking about. That's all I said. It's my opinion. And I just wanted to mention he was close. So I don't even know if that was <laughs> well, well, you know, obviously you're not listening. So let's move on. Uh, Sue, you had something else for the other I, I did. I have quite a bit of experience with uh, neighborhood Facebook groups and my other uh, position. And people can say anything they want, and they can repeat anything, and things are rarely accurate. My recommendation is that any trustee that's interacting with people, in order that you don't get into any kind of a situation where information could be misconstrued, that the library has a blog like you guys did put out this lovely blog that explained the levy that there is a source that you can direct individuals to to say if you want more information please go here here's the link and it's the official library statement and then you don't get in any personal trouble because you're having an you know i mean i, I admire that you did want to put a face on and, and be talk to your neighbors and want to get that information out there but 
the, you get people coming to public meetings and they're going to be like, well, we heard and I heard, and then that is how so much information gets uh, misinformed and actual facts can be continuously pointed to and say, look here, look here, look here. This is the detail. And this board, this library is one of the most transparent government organizations that I know, and that's, of course, due to the legendary Morgan Dubio. Um, starting that transparency, but it really is a wonderful um, way for anybody to come and find any information practically that they want about what we're doing here. Good oh, point. Great. Thank you. Damned if I do, damned if I do. I know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I know. Nice. Nice. But, but nice. you still. Yeah, just vote. <laughs> <laughs> no good deed goes unpunished. Exactly. All right. Does anybody else have anything they want to say? Say no. Can we, can we adjourn? All right. I will now entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. I make the motion. Second. Somebody else second. Great. Diane, please take the vote. Two and Karen. Karen. Yes. 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 Yes.